I had tons of success at Pulaski Academy. We won nine state championships. But it's time for the next chapter. From Little Rock to Clinton, South Carolina, there's a whole lot riding on this season. Coach Kerry, he's a winner. He knows how to win. He knows what it takes to win. My strategy is certainly a lot different, but it's not going to change in college. Always goes on fourth down. He never punts. Onside kicks all the time. This team hadn't had any success in a long time. Look for the ball! So it's going to take everybody coming together, or we're going to fail. We really know we have our work cut out for us. It's go time now. I'm putting a lot on the line here. Buckle up. This is To The House. I've been coaching for, I think this is my 29th year. I'm old, so that makes me forget. I started off coaching outside Dallas and then went to Little Rock, Arkansas, Pulaski Academy High School. I had some opportunities to talk to people about college jobs and Presbyterian's job came up. You look up and a few months later, you know, there you are. I always feel confident. That sounds terrible, but I think you should have confidence. I'm gonna go down there and be me, and they're gonna ask me questions. I'm gonna answer honestly. Like I say, I'm in a great spot. I'm just here to be me, and, and if I'm somebody that fits into this place, then it's a good spot to be, and if not, I've got a great spot to go back to. I was comfortable at Pulaski Academy. Maybe a little bit too comfortable coaching. And you know, sometimes people want challenges in their life. If we go down here and it goes well, then it's a new challenge accepted. It's a new part of a career. But at the same time, it's a huge risk. Once you get to the college game, odds are you're not gonna be there very long. And at 52, maybe that's not the best decision, I don't know, but this is where it led to, and so here I am. Hi, my name is Kevin Kelly. I'm the head football coach at Presbyterian College in South Carolina. Studying the history of the school, they had a lot of success in the 60s and 70s. Here's that snap. He'll give. Last play breaks the tackle. 10, 5, touchdown. Then in the 80s, I think they had some success too. Caleb Griffin on his first touchdown pass. But since then, you know, they've kind of just gone up and down and up and down. Overall, they haven't had what I would call success. When you lose more than one or two games in a season, the mentality changes. People wondering how hard should we work because is it really worth it? That mentality was something I really wanted to change. And I'm not saying they're weak physically, but mentally, that thought process, it dictates how football teams go. Y'all better get your crap together on which freaking running plays you're running downhill, which one you run in front of the quarterback. That caused a fumble the other day. Coach is struggling because he's got several guys that are good enough to play. That's the first way not to get to play. All I'm going to do is put my head down and work and use all the time that I have to try to build the program. We're back. I'm excited to be back. Some surprising events that happened, but I'm excited to be here. It's game week. I'm back. I'm back for another season. You ought to be excited about game week. I got chills just thinking about game week. I couldn't sleep last night. I was tossing and turning. It ain't about who wants to win the game Saturday. It's about who is willing to do what they've got to do right now until Saturday to get ready to win the game. Because I promise you Saturday, those guys want to win it just as bad as you, period. So we're three weeks in. We're really coming up on our first game. And we've got to get things organized. But the first thing I'm worried about is the kids' attitudes, work ethics, about the little things. I realized I didn't have these guys in the summer like scholarship teams do. What are we doing? We've had them three weeks. We've got to introduce a new system in three weeks. Basically, it's like learning a different language. It's like dropping you off in Madrid or something, expecting you to know Spanish the first day. First time you F that up in the game, you ain't going back in. So we don't punt. We always go in on fourth down. We're going to be on freaking ESPN and running fourth downs. We need to look like we at least know what we're doing. We onside. Got Jet Copter this way. We never really kick field goals. We always go for two. Change the minds of like high school kids. That's why I was dominated at PA, but it's different now. Did he have to throw you out while ago because you stopped running? Yeah, I mean, yes, sir. We're at Presbyterian College. Go. These are not just kids. These are grown men who have their own opinions. Just run an eight or don't play. It's not hard. Just try to run it my way. Five right, 50 hammer. They've been a little rusty, you know, because they're learning a new offense, and that's expected. I'm trying to change the first play, you don't even know what it is. What is it? Uh, 
Let's see what happened when you screw off over there. I understand if you don't understand the system right now. Coach Kelly understands. Does anybody have any questions about any place? I'm not mad at you now if you don't know. But we got to be all in. It's a team effort. It's freaking Wednesday game week. Quit throwing it behind. We're really young, too. I think we've got seven true seniors on our team out of 130 guys. With not much time left before St. Andrews, you know, we've got a lot of things we've got to fix quickly. There's a few people on the team that still really don't like Coach Kelly. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Responding to Coach Kelly and his coaching staff, it definitely wasn't the most positive reaction at first. Will you get your crap together? They kind of changed everything around. But this is Lex, a big you. Rick, I'm writing, Rick. I'm just used to seeing certain things, and they kind of threw that out the window with their own philosophies of how they wanted to do certain things. I'm so pushing long. up here. Yeah, we don't, we don't push it up at all. On that one, all you're doing is just watching the why, really. You're going ready, go, and watching the why. I definitely am worried about the transition from his strategy in high school to the college level, especially on the Division One level. Get him moving! Coach Kelly has a lot of pet peeves. But take that bracelet off before I uh, kick you off. I would say his number one is questioning his system. Holy freak. Do your freaking job! Y'all keep doing it your freaking way. Y'all keep y'all can sit on the bench and watch during the game. Coach Kelly's definitely coming here with high expectations. Cause y'all's way ain't working. If you don't know it, I don't care how good you are, you can't play. Holy moly. I know he has a plan, but it's new territory and obviously it's gonna take time. Somebody hit that light. We have a quarterback competition going on here. Little bitty things make all the difference in the world. I've got a young man that transferred in from Michigan, Ren Hefley. I've got another young man who started for them in the spring. Uh, these guys are competing for the quarterback job. So I went to Pulaski Academy from pre-K all the way up to ninth grade. So I played in his like kind of system. I just came in with a mindset that I'm gonna compete. I knew they had a starter last year, Tyler Huff, that was really, really good. He's a little more of a gritty, fiery guy, and he knows the receivers. As we get closer and closer to game one, I've got a tough decision to made. Eventually, we had a meeting one day. All the quarterbacks left the meeting room. He said, hey, Ren and Tyler, stay back for a second. Pull us into a private room, shut the door, and just said, Ren's going to be the starter this year. When it came to Ren being announced the starter quarterback, I wasn't in favor of that. With all my friendship aside, I honestly thought Tyler performed a little bit better than Ren. To me, it was clear that Coach Kelly didn't really know the impact that Tyler had on this team. Huff had been here for a while and made trust with everybody on the team and all that. When he was benched, you know, there was some talk with the team and everything. We were all just like shot, like bamboozled. We were just like, wow, he really did that. Well, I've heard some guys that aren't huge fans of me starting. And so I know a starting job isn't a permanent label. So I'm just making sure that I do everything I can to give myself the best chance to perform for St. Andrews. Let's go! I've got a total of five guys that are from my school at some point. We've got Fuda Shinkawa, who's a linebacker that's going to get a lot of playing time in the first game, maybe start. Last year, I played for Coach Kelly. We ended up winning the state championship. I think in mid-June, Coach Kelly hit me up. I thought it'd be a great opportunity to go play for him again. You literally never missed a game. You started every game. That's something. Uh, I've got Jalen Witcher, who's earned a starting role so far. I'm not trying to have a big ego, but yeah, I came in here thinking that I'm coming here to start. Doesn't matter who's in front of me. I'm feeling good today. Jalen came as a true freshman, and he's earned himself a starting spot. But then, the last few days, Jalen's not been practicing like he did to get the spot. Too far over, Jalen. That is too, look where you caught the ball. Think, Jalen. We're not gonna win games without you thinking. We're not gonna, we're gonna lose games for being dumb. Jalen's playing brain dead. He's turning into this culture instead of the culture he came from. One day at practice, I knew something was off, you know. Coach Kelly calls me over with a talk. You have a very non-routine chance to start every game of your college career, even as a true freshman. But you're not. Tell them why. Lazy. You know why. It's just, I think it's because, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, you're becoming complacent. It ain't just not starting. It'll be, you ain't playing for a while. And that would be a shame, wouldn't it? That you let all that work stop because of the last few days. And hearing that it really told me that you know, this is different. This is college. You got to show every day that you're coming with a different mentality. You can't just come there thinking you're going to start. I'm going to show them. I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm going to turn up the rest of the week at that practice. I have more to show. I have more to prove. There's nothing I should be content with, so I'm going to keep going. Thank you for being on me. I promise you it's going to be different from now. 
Hey Danny, I know you're gonna say it's lightning. Boys, do y'all want to practice in the monsoon? Yes. They didn't act too enthusiastic about it, but I love freaking monsoons. We're gonna go take one waterlogged ball out there and see if we can get these guys' arms stronger. I, I wouldn't say that I enjoy when it rains, but I certainly don't mind it. I wonder if I can drive that lift. I'd like to drive that anyway. Oh, Kelly loves practice in general, so he doesn't care if it's raining. I think there was just one point back in high school when it was raining pretty hard, and he came out in shorts, I think he was shirtless, with like a rain jacket on, but it wasn't zipped up, and he was like dancing like he was a kid. So I think he just loves just doing stuff in the rain. I want it to rain hard. Poor monsoon. <laughs> Football's played in inclement weather. I think you need to practice outside the elements and get used to those things. Suck it the freak up. I think you've got to practice the game the way it's going to be played. If you ever come out of here hoping that it's going to rain and we don't practice, we will practice anyway. But I got bad news for you. God loves watching my teams practice. This man says some crazy shit. <laughs> God likes watching my teams practice. He just does. That's some funny shit. If you chain it as a joke, he was dead serious saying it. That's the crazy part. And I was like, this is a different type of dude. That's what I was thinking when he said it. A little later than I wanted to start, it's 1 a.m. I've got a game sheet. I go through, type out a new one every Friday night before our Saturday game. You know, like a lot of game sheets, I think mine's better than everybody else's, but you know, maybe everybody thinks theirs is good. Well, I mean, you know, first college game. I thought I would be more, I don't know, nervous, but I don't have that adrenaline rush I got back when I was 18 years ago when it was my first high school game. Weighing in on my mind is we have to perform well, especially in this first game. That's a lot of people watching and wondering, is this gonna be successful? And I told our guys, I said, I, I didn't know it was gonna be this big a deal, but quite possibly on Saturday, we're the center of the college football universe. And we might well be. It's game day. I'm really excited to go show what I can do in this first game, to go play with these guys, play for Coach Kelly. St. Andrews is a small NAI school out of North Carolina. Not expecting a huge challenge, but you never really know what can happen with new coach, new players, new system. So I've got to be sharp to do everything I can to make sure that we win this game. This is my first college game as a starter. I was at the University of Michigan the last two years. I redshirted my first year and then had my COVID year. So I've still got four years of eligibility and just thought, you know, life's short. I want to go play. Now I'm here. Now it's, you know, it seems, seems like forever ago, but, and now it's finally game day. I still kind of carry that walk-on mentality from Michigan. I gotta be the first one there, I gotta be the last one to leave. I gotta make everything right. Everything has to be perfect in my preparation because, you know, it can go away like that. And I've seen it go away like that. Oh yeah, I mean, there's, there's jitters. It's the first game of the season, I mean, what do you expect? You know, I think we're gonna surprise people. I think it's gonna be a good showing for the first game. I have no idea what's about to come out of my mouth because I never plan a pregame speech. We've got to put everything aside right now and focus on, not, not them, we've got to focus on us. I can't tell you how excited I am to watch you play football and I am so proud. Take advantage of this great opportunity. You're playing Division I freaking football. Love it, embrace it. Enjoy the moment we walk out there, but the minute that ball's kicked off, it's freaking on. Let's go play some football. Let's go. I'm playing for a coach who's never coached a college football game. You know, the team's first season officially in the Pioneer League. It's an offense that not too many people have seen before, especially on the college Division I level. There's definitely two ways it could go really poorly, it could go really great. Boys, enjoy the moment. This is freaking cool. So I think only Tom will tell what's going on. Go get the freaking football and change the game right here, right now. Proud of you guys, let's go get it done. I either want to go down and score if we were on offense first or onside kick and recover the onside kick and we recover the onside kick. That can put confidence in anybody's eyes and it truly shows them that Coach Kelly's system works. touchdown as a college quarterback. 
first touchdown of the Kelly era. From that moment, I felt like we were gonna have a good day. You know, the game starts off pretty hot. I think there's a lot of excitement going around. I see an arc out. As soon as the quarterback pitches it, I tackle him for a two-yard loss. That was my first college career tackle, so I was pretty happy about that. Let's be perfect. Right now, we've got a chance to be perfect this game. Score every drive. You don't get those chances very often. I'm getting our other quarterback, Tyler Huff, involved in the game, who I think is really going to help us this season as well. The game's going exactly how I want it to go on offense, and I know our defense in a matter of time is going to step up and stop them too. Let's go, D! You know, in the first quarter against St. Andrews, we struggled a little bit defensively at first. They came out and scored a little bit. How'd they score? It doesn't matter what level they are, it's still a college football team. They keep scoring every time they get the ball, so it just means that we got to score every time. Let's go. Let's do it. So I caught it, got my first touchdown of the season. You know, we're rolling. I don't even think that was me. I thought that was God for a moment. I was like, I don't even know if I'm doing this. So Coach Kelly and his offense are scoring every drive, but the defense, we're not doing our job of stopping their offense. Let's be better. Hey, can we stop somebody on defense? One more and zero blitz. That's seven freaking plays. We're scoring a lot, but they are too, so we can't let off the gas. We gotta keep going if we wanna win this game. And it's game one. I knew it was gonna be a little sloppy. They were better on offense than I thought they were gonna be, so they kept scoring. But our offense kept answering. Until our defense gets adjusted to this brand of play, our offense needs to continue to respond. We were balling, you know, everybody was balling. And we've got it! It's only the second quarter, bro. <laughs> Every time we step on the field, we gotta score. Back to throw, looking, to sling it down the field, it's gonna be caught! We're pulling away from them. They're trying to catch up, but it don't matter. We're in a groove. And Presbyterian College leads 56 to 29. Welcome to Kevin Kelly football. Hey, and it ain't zero to zero at halftime. You've earned the right to be up 56 to 29, but this ain't good enough. If we go out there and we go down and score and get a stop, this thing will be over with. On the scoreboard, we'll just play some football. If we don't and we screw off, it's a ball game. I don't want it to be a ball game. No more freaking points on defense, and let's score every time we have it on offense. Let's go. At halftime, the quarterback coach lied and told me like half my stats. He told me like I had 200 yards, and I was like, dang, like I gotta get to work. You know, that's not what I wanted out of this first game. Little did I know, I was well beyond the school record and on my way to a national record. Kelly's gonna roll to his right. Nice little stop and go out wide, and it's gonna be caught by Braden Cash. All that doubt that like should Ren be starting seemed to kind of fade away, and everybody was just really coming together as a team. It is a new school record for touchdown passes. Ren Heffley, in his first game at PC, now has that 70 to 36. The clock's starting to wind down. A lot of guys are getting to go in the game. They're still moving the ball. It just feels good. All our hard work from camp is paying off. Offense putting up 80 points, like that's unheard of. That's one thing for defense. I want us to do that next week. You know, really prove to the offense and the coaches and everything that like we can do this and we're a better defense than what we showed in the first game. Did we line it up on the 50? Line it up on the 50. We won 84-43. I definitely saw a lot of potential in the offense and his philosophy that we have.
People started talking about my stats. Somebody told me on the sideline that I broke the single game touchdown record for all FCS. So I was feeling pretty good about that. I'm an emotional guy. I've held it all in until right now because I was so proud to walk out there with you guys today. You got after it, you represented as well, you bought into your role, and you played hard. You made me the proudest I could ever be to take to go to another school and be a part of this. So thank you for that. On behalf of the players and the coaching staff, I want to present you this game ball for your first time. Boys, let's call it up one time. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh! You know, when we won the game, I knew there'd be some attention. I didn't have any idea. Kevin Kelly says he wants to be like a casino and create a house edge. Kelly won a September 4th college coaching debut, 84 to 43. And true to his word, his team had zero punts and 10 onside kicks. Everywhere I look, college game day or even the next day on ESPN Sports Center, you know, they had Presbyterian College and us playing football. I had a radio podcast show from Mexico that wanted to talk to me. In la vida, como en el football, siempre debes tener un game plan. All those things are cool, but being on the Dan Patrick show, that was a cool thing when that came about. Coach joins us. You gave up 43 points, though, Coach. I mean, 84 you scored, but you still gave up 43. No, we, we did. We've got a lot of work to do on both sides, to be honest. To get to do that, just another really, really cool thing that I need to highlight the college in, but I'm going to have a little fun with it. If you coached in the NFL, would you punt? I'm sure there would be times I'd punt in the NFL. There would be a lot less than what anybody else is doing, though. Well, good luck. It's great to talk to you, Kev, and uh, good luck with uh, the upcoming season. I appreciate you having me on. This is a bucket list thing. I got to check another thing off the bucket list because of the great game of football. But being on the Dan Patrick Show was pretty cool. The St. Andrews game was a little surreal. Sitting there, eating dinner with my dad, getting notifications. You've been tagged in a post by Sports Illustrated. You've been tagged in a post by Overtime. For a long time, I've battled failures. Get used to learning to handle defeat. It's been the first time handling success. You know, growing up, people always talk about, like, bank on a college degree, because that's much more realistic for a guy like me. Don't bank on going to the NFL. Throw 10 touchdowns, and suddenly, in a week, that all changed. They said the Bills scouts are here. Why? The scout from the Bills was supposed to be going to visit Clemson, and his head coach called him and redirected him and told him to come to Presbyterian College and come visit me. He said, since you've got four more years of eligibility, we're just going to wait. We put you in our system, so we'll be watching every game. Like two days ago, I thought I had zero shots playing the NFL ever. I've still got the goal of helping the team win, and I want to do well. Now I've got kind of another goal that, like, if I get even better than that, if I really play solid, then I might be able to go make some money and go do this longer than I thought. And we went had this really great performance in that opening game but there was a rumor that certain receivers were intentionally dropping passes from Ren. Guys think they're being loyal to Tyler by maybe giving Ren the cold shoulder, by maybe not practicing as hard when he's in practice as the quarterback instead of when Tyler's in. I didn't think that was true at all. Drops are something that happens naturally. I just couldn't see somebody wanting to put themselves in that position or put the team in that position because they don't agree with the choice that the coach came up with. You know, I addressed the team about the situation. And let me just say this, you freaking people have a problem with Wren starting at quarterback, y'all need to quit. Talking is stupid, ruining a team is worse. That's why we still got a losing mentality overall. Now get your crap together, play some freaking ball, and come together as a team or don't be on our team. It is easy. I don't know whoever started up that rumor. It's pretty stupid to do that. You're just creating like a breakage between the quarterback and his team. Let's go. I'm worried going into week two. I'm a pretty positive person, but in the game of football, I just see all the mistakes that we make. It always happens in practice. Somebody messes up and Coach Kelly just snaps out of nowhere. Dale, is this how y'all want practice to go? We got freaking national media attention for your performance, and you're not going to perform like this out here. Not happening. Freaking lazy, ain't going to get it done. Our next opponent is Fort Lauderdale this Saturday. 
They might be a better team in St. Andrews. They might not. We don't really have film on them. We have to prepare for every defense they have and every offense they can have. Sometimes when you prepare for everything, you don't really prepare well for anything. Transferring your call. Amongst the other worries I have, one of them is, you know, Chris Chambers, the head coach. Hey, Coach Chambers, this is Coach Kelly at Presbyterian College. How are you? Former All-Pro in the NFL, Pro Bowler. Good, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Good, you too. Coach and I have talked. The guy knows football. He told me on the phone that they're going to show a lot more speed than we've seen. Put all those things together, and I'm really worried about what we've got coming up. All right, I appreciate it, man. Look forward to seeing you guys. Okay, you too. Thanks, Chris. All right, take care. Bye. -bye. Coming off our game against St. Andrews, you know, we're all happy that we won. But especially on the defense, we got to fix some things coming in next week. So since I'm a freshman, I don't really see myself as a leader yet because there's a bunch of upperclassmen that solidified their role as leaders. Some of them are grown men, 23. Right now, I'm kind of just a freshman that kind of works hard in practice, but tries to get results. Fuda, he came from Coach Kelly's high school. And I saw Fuda was a 5'8 linebacker and 150 pounds. And I was like, okay, this will be interesting. He's nimble, shifty, all the above, great athlete. Size isn't a factor for him. He's gonna try and get the job done regardless. Fuda, you're not quarterback. I understand, but still go for the die. I would describe Jared Nagy as kind of like the know-it-all of the team, especially defense. Well, here we go. Nagy, Nagy's a character. I have no filter and nothing is gonna change about me. I'm a senior here at Presbyterian College. I also was elected one of the six captains of the team. I'll consider myself a more silent leader. Work on one, two, one. If you don't know him very well, he comes off as kind of like harsh and just straight to the point, but he's a great kid and he's one heck of a football player. I am more of an antisocial. When I have something to say, it means a lot more than with somebody's just always talking. I never really chose a good hairstyle in my life. And I was like, you know what, let's do something that nobody else has just for fun. Before I was just normal Joe Schmo, but now people walk by and like, oh, nice mullet, man. I'm like, that's hilarious. You know, there's a couple characters on offense. One of them being Nando. He's one of the running backs. Let's act like we're having like a really important conversation about the team. He cracks me up. I think we're gonna turn it around, you know what I'm saying, coach? You gonna stop smiling at his ass and talk to me? <laughs> Shout out to my hometown, honey. <laughs> Love you, okay? I mean, everybody cool with me. I don't got no problems with nobody. Oh! I just got a positive effect on everybody. I've been here for a year, but we didn't really play during the fall semester because we had COVID. This is my first normal college football season. Football-wise, you know, I'm a pretty shifty dude. Help take pressure off Dell when he gets tired. <laughs> You've seen Dell, right? You seen him run, you seen the way he plays? He's just a funny dude. You need to mic him up on practice. No Greg, no Greg, no Greg. Delvecchio Powell, the second. I was having a leader behind the scenes. Good job, boy. I'm just real chill. I'm laid back as well. Man, what? <laughs> My style, I'm not too flashy, but I could be flashy if I really want to be. Yeah, what comparison do you make to yourself? Lamar. Lamar? Yeah. Boy, you must be a damn liar. <laughs> I love making people miss. So you're saying you're comparing Lamar Jackson? But you ended up at BFP. <laughs> tore my foot. <laughs> she likes that kid. I tore my foot on my last ever high school game I ever played. All my other offers went out the window after that, and one offer that didn't go out the window was Presbyterian College. It just felt like home. I got you. Who got my foot? I got you. Who got that foot? I got you. Who got that foot? I got you. I after football practice, I go with my PA boys. They call us the little PA community. You know, we go back to Braden Cash's room and we play a little bit of Madden. You now I gotta show them how I play the game. I am okay at Madden. Oh, let's do randoms. Three teams. Yeah. I really hadn't played Madden at all until I came here and started playing Madden with Isarius and Braden. Okay, your food up. Having the people from my high school, these friendships will never end. I've known them seven plus years. I went to the PA way, fam. What's going on? Even if we weren't playing ball, I would hang out with them. Why he stopped running, bro? Go, baby. What? Go, baby. I'm glad I got my homies here. GG, son. Well, I did better than I thought. What? <laughs> Today is game day. 
if we go in and fix the things we need to and play our best game, we've got a chance to win. Everything in the world always falls into place. You try your best, do what's right, things work out. They ain't always easy, but they always work out like they're supposed to. Everybody understand? Sir. It's just another week where we gotta come out there and we gotta grind. To get this win, we gotta be all out. We gotta trust our guys, we gotta trust the system, and for us to come together, we gotta have that chemistry. It doesn't take much of anything to start separating and having people question and division and things like that. So I'm always worried about that. But another win will certainly help bring us even closer together. Presbyterian College Blue Host football against Fort Lauderdale. Today it is game two. And they'll turn their hand off the power. He's got a lot of room left side, crosses the 40. Breaks the tackle on the 50. Inside Eagle territory down to the 41 yard line. We start the game. Del Powell has a great run, and we capitalize on that drive with a touchdown. He's got a man over the middle, caught at the 10. Cutting inside to the 5. 2 1 is a touchdown. So now I've got some confidence. I'm thinking, okay. It's early, but we're headed in the right direction, and hopefully we're off to a good, momentous game. And just like that, Presbyterian College leads Fort Lauderdale 8 to nothing. Going into the Fort Lauderdale game, we start off really strong. Let's go! Captain looking, looking. He's going to try to take a shot. He's going to be hit from behind, and the ball's on the ground, and PC will have it! You know, the defense is making plays. I'm really proud of our guys, and we're flying around doing our jobs, and that's all you can ask for from a defense. Apple back to throw again. Oh, he took another hit, slings it over the middle ball, batting around. Let's go! Being able to only hold them to a field goal, that's huge, and that's something, you know, we're really proud of that we did this week and fixed after St. Andrews. It was definitely promising to see the defense come out and respond so strongly after the St. Andrews game. All the stuff from last week is all starting to fade away. They're definitely under heavy pressure. It'll dump it off underneath and wide open for a touchdown. And it's just starting to feel like football again. I ran. Step forward. Bring one up the middle. This is going to be a double pass. We throw it back to Huff. Huff will chunk it down the field. It's going to be caught at the 25 and staying in bounds. And he's going to score. 20 nothing, another two point conversion try. They'll give it to OGK and he'll run it right in. Let's go! Hefley back to throw to the back corner. Oh, what a grab by Jalen Witcher! And that's going to be a Blue Hose touchdown. He'll chuck it down the sideline. Got a man, is caught at the 45. It's Turner. Foot race to the end zone and he's going to win it with ease. We're up by a lot, but we're still playing kind of sloppy. They got a man in the back of the end zone. Is that ball intercepted? Is that ball intercepted? Did he throw it to them? I think it is. What the freak happened? And we know we've got a big one next week, so Coach Kelly's not letting off the gas. He's still coaching us hard. It's a freaking two. When have we ever said you can stop in the middle of the field on Twister? Coach Kelly, he expects perfection. Even though we're in a groove, our momentum's going, we're scoring, you shouldn't be satisfied with just good. Jalen, look for the ball! That truly what separates Coach Kelly from other coaches. Some coaches would be like, oh, good job, good job, you just made the first down. But, you know, your route might have sucked, so he might want to critique that. I want to look sharp and crisp on this last drive. Do your job, run the routes that I call, quit screwing off. We're starting to look like them. Definitely under heavy pressure. He'll be flushed out to the right, but he's got time. He's going to be stopped at the two and thrown down to the ground. Do your freaking job. You're not a freaking runner. You throw it. Throw the freaking ball. You know, he, he's honest. We just got to keep that momentum up. Defense, I'm proud you stepped up. You've done some things. Y'all haven't really played down to their level. But offensively, we've played down to their level. I want you to look sharp from the get-go on this next series. Everybody got it? Let's go. We're all feeling good, you know, especially now we have to keep our foot on the gas and show what we can do. High snap, they fake it to him, they throw a slant, ball batted, and it's intercepted. It's Jaden Martin coming to the 10, near sideline 20, he could be gone. Jaden Martin to the 40, to the 50, in Eagle territory, he's running out of gas to the 20. Murphy gives him the block, and it is a PC touchdown. We were doing really well with tackling. Really well at putting pressure on the quarterback, getting back there, getting into his face. We were just going after him. Hey, look quick! The game's winding down, and the offense is just doing their thing, you know, fixing up some mistakes that they made. He'll fake it, now he'll take off. He's gonna cross the end zone for a touchdown. 
in the hole. Here's a pitch underneath to Chase Tinsley, and he's gonna dive into the end zone. And he'll turn and he'll hand it off. T.J. Jones just ran it in for his first career touchdown. Against Fort Lauderdale, we win 68 to three, and there's a lot of good things in there. I'm excited about their attitudes and their effort, but the mistakes, we've got to eliminate them. You know, we just came out for two wins. We've proven that, you know, Coach Kelly's system works. Week three going to Campbell. Don't throw it to him if he's not open. We really know we have our work cut out for us. Come on, Lawson. It's a very important game. People are saying it's our first real test. Their scholarship team. People will have us losing in this game. We don't care. We're gonna go out there with 100% effort. We're gonna go through this week of preparation. We're gonna have you know everything in line. We're gonna strategize. I've worked my butt off all week and done everything that I feel like I could do. I feel ready to go. We know we're capable of as a football team at PC. We have to come together. You know, if we're not on our P's and Q's, they will, you know, run off with it. Going into Campbell, Coach Kelly really isn't happy with how we're doing in practice. You're not going to beat Campbell if you want to win Saturday. You got to want to win now. Nando, you just got to avoid people. You don't even have the ball if you ran into somebody. Yeah, this week's been a stressful week. Kelly been on my ass a lot. <laughs> One mistake led to another. We started snowballing and Coach Kelly blows up. Hey, just call it up. We're just practicing being bad. I see guys just not focused, you know, running the wrong routes, running the wrong plays. Let's go! He made it real known that he didn't feel like we were coming together as a team. This is why we're gonna get our butt beat. I don't think that was the best decision as far as the morale for the team and how we felt after that. First things first, on defense, how's it going over there? Did y'all have a good practice? Because ours freaking sucked. Before today, I mean, I felt like the kids were ready to put on display what they've learned so far. ESPN's gonna be here following us around. It's another camera, another everything. Uh, and then at the hotel, to everything we do, it's just another camera following us around. You know, you can't have a roller coaster of a week, you know, up one practice, down one practice. Maybe they won't show up if we get our butt beat, but, you know, I, mean, I wouldn't. You know, hopefully tomorrow they'll come back out and give me some confidence that we're gonna go up there and, and be really competitive and, and have a chance to win the game. So. We still got to keep our head down and keep working, all that kind of stuff. But in the end, you know, uh, it, it's, who, it's who's willing to prepare the most during the week. We found out that college game day is going to come to our practices. They're going to have a nice segment on us. And, you know, that's exciting. We've got a lot of people following us around. You guys are here. ESPN's here. So this is a big game with a lot of pressure that I hope we can step up for. But I've definitely got my concerns. When you see the list, if you're not on the list, we could not take everybody here. Kelly announced to the travel team, and there was a lot of talk around the locker room of people who thought they should be going that weren't. I give you my word, I hate it. If I could, I'd take 134 guys. For us to truly become a team, you got to get over it. It's college ball. People lose their spots. This week, do everything you can to help our team. I've had five media people go, we'll see how you do against a scholarship team. I'm just tired of hearing it. It's time to prove. That's what you should want to do, but you do that now until Saturday. Then Saturday it happens. Good. 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 So last day of practice is really the practice where you know you need to get what you need to get in practice. But after that, it's time to focus. It's time to go mode. You got to know it don't matter. When you decide to play, you are a very good football team. You do that, we're gonna win. It's gonna be a freaking ride like you wouldn't believe. So it's time to load a bus. It's time to go get a win. Friday morning, getting ready to leave to go to North Carolina. If they look you in the eye when, when you're talking or when any coach is talking, people are paying attention to you more. They're taking more in from the facial language, the body language, and you don't have to repeat yourself as often later on. Hey, I'm gonna have your attention. You know, he looks around when he's talking to see if everybody's giving eye contact. I'm sitting down slouched like this, but you know, I still think I can maintain eye contact with him. The guy in the back, right? Whoever's in the back left right now is about to get off the bus and put his crap up. Who beside you, Landon? Lando's like, uh, 
uh, Orlando don't know what to do. I said, it's Nando, coach. And he's like, you don't got any freaking sense. Eye contact, my gosh, son. You want to get your crap and get out? Whenever I talk to you, if I see you at the county freaking fair looking me in the eye, sit up like a man and treat me with respect. You're not in the game in the first half. If you can't sit up, Landon, you're coming next. Sit your butt up when I'm talking. It's not hard. I was, I was pissed. <laughs> yeah, he definitely wants to send a message to people that when he says something, he's he's about it. Like he's not gonna just make a open in the thread and not act on it. One of the things I think is important is a good night's sleep, especially not for the game. A couple things. One, Coach Kelly's giving us announcements about times we need to be certain places, and he announces that he's taking our phones for the night. We give you instructions; they're for your own good. They're not for debate. They're not for negotiation. They're for our good as a team. Taking the phone was, you know. It might not seem a lot, but for some people it is. I mean, the negativity doesn't do any good. So if you don't want to turn your phone, don't turn your phone. And then you won't play tomorrow, and then you turn in your stuff to roll, and we'll be done. Power your phones off, please. Have a good night. All right, we'll see you in the morning. Thank you. I personally don't think there was one person who agreed with the decision. It's morning of the Campbell game, and we've got some things we've got to do after breakfast. We're having a little walkthrough with a water bottle, just sharpening things up, getting ready for the game. Coach Kelly announced that Nando won't be playing. You want to get your crap and get out? You're not in the game in the first half. You don't got any freaking sense. I didn't think that was the best decision personally just because I don't think it's a good decision to put the whole game on though. But at the same time, we're going to continue to play PC football. The experts think that the other team is going to beat us by at least 10 points. I love, absolutely love to prove people wrong. My daddy told me I'd never amount to anything in life. I don't know if I have or not, but it's more than he thought, I'll bet you. I use it as a little chip on my shoulder. And those guys that are the best in the world tell us we ain't got no chance to win. I like to show them they're dead wrong, don't know what they're talking about. This is the game someone was circled and said, this is our game that's going to determine if we're going to buy in or not. But lots riding on this game. Just jogging out on the field before the game, you can see that they're a lot bigger than us. They're a scholarship team. They've got a lot of Division I bounce backs. I've already played them two other times in my career. I know they're going to be big, I know they're going to be strong, but I also know that if I come out there and I hit them in the mouth, they're not going to receive it very well. We got something to prove. It doesn't matter who we're playing. We're ready to play at our top potential, give 100% effort. We are the story of David and Goliath today. When we get knocked down, we know somebody's going to step up and make a play that's going to get us right back in. I want to see it tonight, and we will come out of here victorious, and it's going to be a fun ride. They're going to be tough to beat. If we pull this off, it's going to be a true system win. We run through our first couple plays that we always have at the beginning of a series. Hefley will roll that way, look. He'll dump it off in the flat, reached out and caught at the 34-yard line. It just really sets the tone like, OK, we can play with them. You know, it's not that bad as long as we stay with our offense. We're stopped with like a yard short of the first down. Coach Kelly, he always goes for it on fourth down. We decide to go for it, fourth and one. Shotgun snap, Hefley looking to throw. Under pressure, he'll have to be flushed out to the left. He's gonna be chased down, he gets away, and he'll throw it down the field, and that ball's gonna be intercepted. Right out of the gate, we're having some problems. Mott, here's a handoff, he breaks the tackle to 40. Coming near side, 35, 30, 25 to the near sideline, 20. Running back to the 15. The first snap, we're ready to go, but we start off pretty slow. We gotta step it up. Here's a handoff up the middle, and that's gonna be a Campbell touchdown. After the interception, they score pretty quickly, so we're right back on the field, right back up, ready to put together a better series than the last one. Let's go, make up for it. Quickly, Hefley snaps it. We'll sling it out left. It's gonna be caught at the 29. What I found from this team is that when things go really well, they go really well with these guys. When they start going bad, though, it's hard to get them out of it. And the snap goes over his head around him, and somebody falls on it. You got to catch it. That's as good as it's going to get. You can't fall apart like that. 
You've got to get able to get the freaking snap. That's when he really started going left. Hartley back to throw. He'll look right. It's going to be caught in PC territory down to the 41 yard line. As the game keeps going, we're just kind of looking at each other, trying to figure out what can we do now to try and slow down, you know, the momentum that Campbell's taking. Our head started spinning at that point. Freak. Gosh dang it. If you stop, you're gonna get sacked. It was going bad in that game. So I called for a punt. For a punt. For a punt. He never punts. We don't punt. I'm the coach that never punts. <laughs> and so I called for a punt. Um, everybody makes a big deal a lot about the fact that we punted the ball in the Campbell game. Coach Kelly tells me to punt. It's been a long time since I punted. Part of me was like a little disappointed because it's a mark that our offense isn't up to where it should be. Somebody else do it. Just go punt the Get freaking up. ball. Man, that was rough. Hefley will quickly kick it and it goes straight up in the air and will come down at the 16 yard line. Oh man, oh my god, that was, uh, yeah, that was horrible. That crap ain't gonna get it done. Yes, sir. I don't understand. Got time, we'll throw it down the middle of the field and that's gonna be caught by Jai Williams in the end zone. It is, it's a touchdown. They score and go up 21-0, and it feels like the air just kind of gets sucked out of our sideline. Hey, we've come a long ways. Let's not step backwards, not now. This is crazy, like, this is D1 college football. Oh, they turn away. away. Oh, my goodness, and it is a Campbell touchdown. You know, this is going to be a dunk fight. We're going to have to get through this. Heflin rolls to the right, and he'll chuck it downfield, and it's intercepted. They're grabbing our guy. Where's this happening at? At the top of the break on every break. We ran all out. On the backside of it. Oh my god! And I just felt like it was all gone. All the air was out of us, all the emotion. You know, that's a bad place to be as a football team. And he's hit hard at the 18. And then the ball popped out. The ball popped out, and I think Campbell recovered it at the 10. I'm sick of this crap. That's why I tell you to go down and not fight for extra yards. That's why I say get out of bounds. That's why I say don't go fight for extra yards because that crap right there, the one yard you get and we fumble the freaking ball. You can't win doing the things that you've been doing. It's just going downhill on all sides. Off the edge, here we come. And we didn't get to him. They chuck it downfield and that was going to be caught at the goal line. Flipping in the end zone is a touchdown. Our guys are losing what little confidence they have, and it's going south in a hurry. Quick snap, under some pressure, and the ball's intercepted. Why are you going, he didn't get open? What is your job? Throw it to him. And that one's gonna be intercepted. Then what did you do? How did that work out? It was intercepted. Everything that could go wrong is going wrong for us. Hartley looking, he'll take a shot towards the end zone, towards height again. It's a touchdown. It's frustrating and it's embarrassing. No one really knows what's going on right now. Hartley steps up. Now he's going to step to the right. Looking, looking. He's just got to heave it down there. And there's a lot of pushing and shoving. That ball is going to be bobbled and caught. I have never, and you haven't either probably, been beaten this bad in the first half in your lives. I haven't. And it is 100% my fault. I thought we were ready. We weren't ready. We're in hell right now, gentlemen. I'm asking you to help us dig out of this thing. If we can find a way to stay together, not point the finger, listen to your coaches, and we coach a little better, we can climb our way out of this thing. Game's not over, still a lot of game to play. We gotta get what we can get. They'll sling it out, the ball's almost intercepted. The game just went south so quick. They were scoring so easy, just big boy bombing us. Felt like they were just like better than us in every way possible. Even though I don't believe they were, that's what it felt like. Hey Kobe, though, that's the difference between catching that ball, yes, sir. we got it there, or a touchdown. Yes, all those plays matter now. I'm having my worst day of football of all time. Under pressure, he'll be flushed out and spun around and sacked. I'm missing reads. My footwork's all over the place. Where's he going? Where is he going on the PC? I'm just throwing a lot of interceptions. And that ball's intercepted, touchdown. I think I had nine turnovers. And there's another interception. My goodness. Probably the worst I've ever felt. You know, anytime you give up 72 points, it's inexcusable. Losing a game like that, especially with all the eyes that were on us and everything, it's embarrassing and it's just tough. 
I thought I had them ready. I didn't have them ready. It's the bottom line. I still think if I'd have done a better job this week, y'all could beat this team. And I apologize to you that you had to be out on the field and do that. I apologize to you, and I mean that with all I am worth. I've got to be way better than that. I'm asking you to hang on, come back Monday. Let's get better every day. We're going to give Dayton more than they ever thought we could give them. I expect you to be men of your word. Hose on one, two, one. Hose! Coming off the Campbell week, it's it's tough. Complete lack of confidence. We didn't win any guys over to the new staff and what we're trying to do system-wise. And you want to be able to push the reset button because now conference starts. These games matter. And you're hoping that refreshes and recharges everybody. And then it starts pouring down rain. Here at the smallest Division I school in the country, we don't have an indoor. So when it rains, we've got to go outside. All right, defense, let's get it in. It's hard for us to practice and fix things in the rain because you're just practicing trying to maintain when it rains. Could y'all make it a priority to complete the pass? We look like idiots. Rain is psychologically proven to make a lot of people be in a worse mood anyway. And for guys that need something, especially with that weekend lingering in your mind, it's tough. It's very hard after that loss, especially with Coach Kelly. You know, he's never lost like that. He hardly loses at all. It's definitely something to learn from. Ah, uh, give him a good throw. I've never got beaten that bad ever in my life. Like 72 0, just being flat out dominated. There's two kinds of teams in the world those that lick their wounds, put their head down, and mope around all week, or those that go, I just got my butt beat. I'm going to come out pissed off. This week we have a big conference game, so the stakes are high now. Last week's loss didn't even matter. This week's game is very important. First play of series down here. We'll do two offenses. We can't let little mistakes snowball and make us make bigger mistakes. Kyron! With this loss, frustration's gonna happen, and you can really see when he calls out Kyron. Kyron! I swear the kid doesn't try. I'm, I'm gonna bench our captain and never play him. Kyron was minding his business just standing there and he just starts going off on Kyron. Kyron, you can't let him manhandle you. I definitely think he's picking on me. Can we run the freaking play? My gosh. I can't play you if you're gonna go outside on that kind of, on the vertical same routes. He just tries to not do anything good. I think he's just testing me to see. I definitely consider myself one of the harder workers on the team. Kyron, better freaking effort, please. I think you're trying to make me bench you just to see if I will. I really do. I think him saying something like that, it definitely made me wonder, like, where is this coming from when I've never had anybody complain about how hard I work. We're running plays on air, I believe our second group was in, and somehow the first group ends up being in there. But I didn't run in because I didn't hear anybody call for us. and. Practice just stops because of that. We need better leadership out of our older guys. That includes you, Kyron. Yeah, I'm calling you the freak out. So he blows up on me. You know, he tells me I'm not locked in, just not paying attention. Kyron, you're a freaking captain. It's embarrassing. You should be embarrassed. That was pretty much the end of my day. You're not starting, Austin. You're the one. I'm just, I'm just tired. You know, being a senior, being one of the older guys, I'm supposed to be locked. I'm supposed to be one of the ones in the front paying attention. So. I do take the blame for most of that. I, I didn't understand why it was that big of a deal. I'm not the first person that's missed a call out, even though I don't think anybody said anything. You're starting, Austin. I was like, wow, this is for real. We lost a great player that we need on the field. It's definitely a big loss to the offense. Kyron, this isn't going to work. I'm not, I'm not going to kick you off the team. You're a good kid. But I can't let you be a captain like this. You could be something special. You could be awesome. But this is your chance. So decide if you want to do it, but then you're going to have to show me you're going to do it. Because I'm not putting up with this stuff yesterday, like I did yesterday and today. You got to understand, like, everything we're doing, a lot of stuff goes completely against stuff I've learned. So I know. It's like, I'm still trying, it, I haven't perfected anything, so that's why I'm trying to get to that point. What could I say, what could I say right now to make you happy? Is there anything? I just want you to tell me what I need to do and turn my spot back. That's all I need to do. I need to, you need to give enough effort where I don't have to say your name one time. That's it. I'm really not, I'm not even asking you to not mess up. I'm just saying if you do it, go 100 miles an hour. You just, you should be better. Hey, hey, listen. Ah, uh, Kyron, keep going. He's reading it like Twister. 
Hope your freaking guys are giving effort. For those of you that don't want me, me, me to be your coach, and I've, I've got a handful of you picked out, you get a tough freaking luck, I'm gonna be. So if you don't like it enough, freaking quit. I'm dying for you to quit, because then we'll be forced to play the guys that may not know as much as you, may not be as big, but they get after it. They freaking try. Football is the last place in this freaking world that we can all come together as a team or in the stands and forget race, politics, COVID, all that bull crap, but not us. Please hold your head up straight, Nando, before I just lose my crap and make you never come back. You know what your hardest is. Just get, that's all, just, that's all. Mistakes clear up. They don't matter as much. Defense, good effort down here. Mr. Hatcher didn't like to. Great effort. That's what we gotta have. You may have to carry us. Call it up. Oh. Let's make sure they're all set up. Can we do that? So we at least look like we know what we're doing. You know, going into league play and everything, league play kind of means more. So it's a new season basically at this point. We want to know. Whoa. Nice, throw it sooner. Whoa. Good, good route. Nice route, Matthew. Me coming to PC, you know, following Coach Kelly, this is probably like the biggest game, the first conference game, trying to get that win. Oh. Just throw it to him. Don't lob it and try to get it over linemen, or that's gonna freaking be tipped and picked. Throw the ball. Oh. Let's go, next group. You gotta be more accurate than that. If we play tomorrow, like we practice to game, we're looking at another Campbell score. Because it's still game one of conference. I'm still not gonna, I'm not gonna lower the threshold of score you know, to, to run the ball and play the fight. We've got to find a way to get better. We're going to play this game out. And right now, I'm not seeing anything that leads me to believe that we're going to come out and play our best football. Go! Jalen Jones fell down. Kick off, we're going to kick it towards the sun. Oh, nice, nice hands. Good kick, gotcha. That, that was a down on the ball kick. We don't need it to hop on the first one, Jack. Jack, Jack, we can't kick. You can't kick tomorrow. You know, our goal is still finish top of the conference, all that kind of stuff, but it's hard to do that if you're missing assignments and missing tackles, so. All right, everybody in. If you play 80% of your, pot your potential tomorrow, 80%, We'll blow these guys away. But if you don't, and you play like this, you're gonna be 50 to nothing. Did last week not bother y'all? Not the 72, it's just the freaking losing. It kills me. You got a chance to be special and something real and something you'll look back at and go, that was us. We brought that crap together, that was us. Who do we think is gonna step up and be the freaking man tomorrow that's gonna surprise everybody? Keith? I like it. Keith, call it up for us, buddy. We need you tomorrow. Oh. Here we are coming up to Dayton. It's our first conference game. It's a chance to put the Campbell game behind us, to wipe the slate clean. If we can play well in this game, feel better about ourselves. You know, some of those emotions go away, some of those memories fade. Uh, the whole team, you know, knows how important this game is. We got exposed against Campbell, I mean, physically and mentally. Dayton didn't look that athletic, especially in warm-up. So we thought we were just going to go in, get the job done, and then leave. It's game day, and things can change in three hours if we can just put it together for three hours. You've got a chance for redemption. You've got a chance to redeem, and that's all you can ever ask in life. When you get a little confidence, that's when we're going to be in everybody's trouble. I promise you. Today's the day you make that statement. I believe that. Y'all got to decide it too. Go, 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 He'll chuck it down to the 38-yard line, gets caught by Powell. He spins out of a tackle and advances down the sideline. First quarter especially, we just came out firing. Everything in this first part of the game is 
going well for us. You know, we're feeling great. It's a Presbyterian College Blue Hose touchdown. We just start firing all cylinders. Well, what a start here by the Blue Hose offense. So we get the onside, and once we get it, it feels like we won the championship. Like everybody on the sideline, we're all going crazy. <laughs> Once I got past the linebackers, I already know it was touchdown. We're able to see what we can do when we bring it together, and then we're able to see how bad it can go against the exact same team, same talent, when we don't. We started making some mistakes, and then they just started capitalizing on our mistakes, and sooner or later, they were in the end zone. You know, I call a trick play with two quarterbacks in. It goes bad. Ball! And I look up and I think they scored 40 straight points, 41 straight points, something crazy. After that, they were just scoring, they were firing all of a sudden. It was like just touchdown after touchdown after touchdown. Anytime you're up by 23 points and then blow it, it's tough to keep your head high and keep doing your assignments. By the time we could get to halftime, that little snowball rolling down the mountain was an avalanche. When we were playing good, didn't it feel great? It was a high. That's what y'all can be, but we make one mistake and we roll over. We were fixing to run them out of the place. If we allow these mistakes to continue, there isn't anything that's gonna save us. I'm not saying we're not fighting. I'm just saying we're not playing smart. Know your job, do your job. We go back out in the second half and it's a continuation of the second quarter. Oh. Uh, they're scoring, they're, they're going to keep scoring, so we got to find out something to stop them. Kevin Kelly, very unhappy. What are we doing? Who cares it's on the scoreboard? we got to do our job. Like, this is terrible. Hey, lead this team to victory. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. After that touchdown, we were like, man, we still got a chance to win this game. So here comes an onside kick. So now we've got a real chance with four minutes left. If we can get this thing to 63 to 50, we can get an onside kick and make something happen. Two major mistakes in a row by PC. But then in the end, we made a couple of mistakes that you can't overcome when you're down and you're trying to make a comeback. After the Dayton game, everybody just kind of frustrated, but you know, we did see the positives. We've got a lot to fix, obviously. Still those simple mistakes. But in the end, we showed that we're willing to fight when most people wouldn't. We got a bye week and you're gonna have some time off. Take care of your injuries, take care of yourself, pat yourself on the back of what you're proud of. Never be happy with a loss, but know we're this close to being pretty good. We really are. You know, I was divided on the way I felt about the bye week personally because part of me thought we needed to be doing football. I need to be doing more football, but I knew we had to go out and recruit. Well, one of the things I did on my recruiting trip was I went down and watched the team I'd coached last year play. But I'll be honest, it felt weird. In no. dream? No, not living any <laughs> dreams, just fighting the fight. Going back in, I thought, well, I'm not, the, I'm not in the same spot. It really takes good leadership from even the players. You know, somebody on the sideline to go, what are y'all doing? I didn't know how it would be taken. It's getting hard. And you just get torched on Facebook. Oh, God. Move. Yeah, yeah, we should do anything. People are mean when I don't look at it. People take pictures of it and send it to Dana so she has to. Uh -huh. But it was a relief just to watch football and not have to coach those guys, just to get to appreciate them as a fan. I am a football coach. 
I went back, and when the people saw me there, it reminded me of what I am. And I needed that. Family is really, really important to me. I don't think it means just make them feel good all the time. I think it means teach them what they need to be taught to make it through this life. I knew that I uprooted my family to come to South Carolina to come to this college. We've been living in the same town for 25 years, and you know that was tough to uproot her. So we got a chance to go back. We were able to put on a surprise party for her for her birthday because it was her birthday week. The time is the one thing in the world you can't get back, and you committing and spending time to come and see us is awesome. We appreciate it, and on top of it all, you know, what kind of wife packs it up and moves when you are in a perfect place? It's because that, you know, I mean, obviously she's awesome and, and want to do what I want her to do. Okay, so now we know who to blame. It was cool, very cool, to be able to get a bunch of people together and spend a couple of hours and let her see that people cared about her and respected her. I was able to do something for her that I knew she would really love. You know, after the bye week going into Moorhead State, we're super focused again on assignment and stuff like that. You've got to decide what you want to work on. you got extra time. I mean, there's no other way to put it than you've got to find a way to keep grinding. Everybody will get a chance to play, get out there, show us something. Uh, come on, Gabe, make it easy. At this point, we're all just questioning, like, is this really going to work? Earn your spot, earn your time. So you do that, but we still got to fix all the stuff we need to fix. Ah. Come on, Jake. We'll be changing a couple things here and there, we'll switch some guys around. Some of you guys got a chance to earn something. There you go. Good. Let's go, next group. Oh. Be smarter, Gabe. Good, Nando. Good spot, Jalen. Nice, good, nice catch. Oh, oh, oh. Doing a pretty job of just focusing up, practicing harder, and practicing much sharper for the next week. Sooner, Red. Anticipate what it's going to be. Anticipate, get your hand off the ball. You're you're a half second late on every throw. Focus at practice was off. Oh, oh. Oh, hey, everybody in. Let's go. When you come out this week. Let's have, let, let's learn, but let's have some enjoyable, enjoyable practices. Get back to loving the game a little bit. Remember like you're in fifth grade while you played. I'm going to one, two, one. Oh. You know, after the Dayton game, Huff comes out and he decides that his ACL is too hurt and he can't continue. Huff leaving is a huge impact. Huff was our like, leader. You know, the, the one good thing that came during this time was uh, the captains came to me and wanted to meet with me. And for the first time, I saw a real forward step of a group of leadership. We kind of came together as captains and tried to talk about, you know, what can we do to improve practices and improve morale. You guys are going to have to take a little bit more of a role maybe that you don't feel comfortable with at times. It, the, the, the easy part's going to be getting everybody up. That's not hard. The hard part's going to be getting everybody from zero to halfway up when they wander out here like this and y'all can see it from the get-go. And does it suck sometimes, but in the end, I promise you, one of these days y'all will be glad you did. Appreciate you guys. Thank you all. I'm hoping it's something that can really help our team take a step forward as a group instead of as factions. Back to throw. Now he's flushed out to the right. He's going to be sacked. Ren, just step up! You're missing freaking wide open guys, throwing picks, and you're moving off your spot when it's not there. That's you? That's who you are? Because that's not who my freaking quarterbacks are. It's a different brand of football, and I need to do it his way. I'm trying to do that the best I could. Coming out of the bye week, we have a lot of momentum back. Oh! We're all kind of refreshed up, and we still have that mentality of we want to win that conference championship. Coming out of those last two games, you know, they reveal a lot of character, but they also reveal, you know, all the things you need to work on. I wanted to look at it as a completely new season, so to speak. Look, we had a break in between. This is the second half of the season. This is a chance for us to get where we need to be, and I thought it was an opportunity for us to make a change. Tell a good one. Walk, offense walk through over here. Defense is going to walk through over there. Coming off the Dayton game, our pass protection had broken down. We needed to fix that. We got to do a better freaking job of pass block. We've got to fix it. If we do, 
We will score 100 on this team. If we don't, it's all y'all. I told y'all from the first day I met y'all. It's all about y'all. It doesn't matter who we got everywhere else. It's on y'all. One of the things that affected us this year, I didn't get a chance to work with these kickers very long on the different kinds of kicks I wanted to do onside-wise. If you get onsides in a game, it makes a big difference. We've been doing some weird stuff in football. We onside kick after we score. I've based our whole football philosophy on the analytics of what things win football games the most. The Harvard professor analyzed 3,000 games. He decided you shouldn't punt the football. Just gotta get two. We haven't been really getting a lot of onside kicks lately. It hasn't really been effective towards our game, which it is a key part of our game. The kickers that we have, <laughs> they're not used to this. You kickers, you think one of you guys could kick a good one? Like just remotely decent? What's it like being a kicker for Coach Kelly? It's interesting. Archer, that's what can't happen. If you have a bad kick, you need to forget and focus on having a better one the next one. And kicking onside especially. Gosh almighty. Rip! If he freaking drops, throw the three. The biggest thing you worry about as a quarterback coach is that if they lose confidence, they're going to hesitate. And I felt like in practice leading up to Moorhead, Wren started hesitating. Slow down, you cross the line. Are you just like not athletic at all? <laughs> you, you, you half kick it. You're half kicking it. We ain't starting off good, Ren. I ain't starting off freaking good. We have to eliminate mistakes, not make them. I'm not really doing what Coach Kelly wants today. I've been late on my reads and haven't been executing the system the way it's supposed to go, the way the offense is designed. Come on, Ren. Give me another freaking quarterback in. After the Dayton game, Huff comes out and he decides that his ACL is too hurt and he can't continue. Whether I've got Bryce Young backing me up or Tyler Huff, somebody else or nobody backing me up, I'm trying to do everything I can to be the best that I can be for my teammates and try and win this next game. Freaking stand there and make the throws on time, anticipate, and do the job of a quarterback. That's what I'm asking you to freaking do. Make it as hard, it ain't that freaking hard. When Kelly gets on the run, it's a lot. Do not throw the ball up to a guy and expect him to make a play. So I'm looking for different ways to motivate him. It's the shotgun approach. Red. What button do we push to get him to be where he needs to be? I know Ren cares about his teammates, so I thought, I'm gonna up down these guys because of him, and that'll make him do it. Punish the team, because you can't go on two. Down. We, uh, we can't complete, we, we look like a third grade team. I'm trying to get my game up to the best it can be, because I know I gotta be playing better if we're gonna win any of these games, and I, I gotta be playing close to perfect. Good. We'll find a way to get through this, but we need it to happen before Saturday when we play Moorhead State. Do what you need to do to get yourself ready to play tomorrow. So we're back at home tomorrow. We're undefeated at home. Regardless of competition, y'all played well, very well at home. Let's come back with the intent to do everything we can to defend our home turf tomorrow. A lot of stakes are on this game. We need to win so people can actually see that we can do this. And the momentum will be huge if we get our first home conference game win. So we're really ready for this. We win today. Everything we wanted to do to start the season is still there for us. Every single freaking thing we wanted. We are still in control of our own destiny. We can't get down. We can't put our head down. That's when you really see what you're made of. And I've said it all week. Somebody has got to make a play. And here comes Presbyterian College. We are ready to go. It's a low kick. Giselle will pick it up around the 15-yard line, trying to get to the left. There's a little hole there, but he's hit hard at the 26. We need something good to happen early. Things didn't go well early. Heffley back to throw. Now he'll be flushed out to the right, going to get around the defender, and he'll just chunk it way downfield, and it's going to be intercepted. We started with the ball, but Ren threw a pick on the first play. You got to hit the first throw. And they'll be all, we got to go out there, and we got to get our job done. And they'll hand it off quickly, go up to 45, up to the 47-yard line. Oh, nice tackle. He's going to be dropped back. Our defense, they're stopping them. They're doing well. I'm ready to turn it back around, get back on the field, and just keep playing. It's going to be left, Ren, left, Ren, left. All right. A little floater. We got a man down there. What? Did he just put one hand up? Pass over the middle. Bachelder, boy, it looked like he was held on. Two hands, Lawson! Looking to throw. Stays in the pocket, slings it out. We got a man! Ren! Just throwing the ball! How'd it go? It went bad. Next question, please. Know your dang job. Whenever the offense goes four and out, it really kind of crushes our morale, you know, how we're defending and how we're playing that game. 
is in the end zone for a touchdown. We have got to just run the offense and do what you're coached to do. We're killing ourselves. They're not beating us, we're beating ourselves. He'll run to the left, got a little bit of room. He'll try to muscle his way, and he's in the end zone for a Moorhead State touchdown. We can't move the ball. We give up a score on defense. I'm emotional. Say yes, sir, or you won't ever play it again. That's how you're going to get no time if you can't even go in when you're supposed to. And shut up arguing. That is the biggest disappointment I've ever seen. I can't find the button to push for these guys to play well early. I know we need a spark. Hey, Ren. Just do it at no motion. Just do that ace. He'll roll to his right. Good block from DeVecchio Powell. We'll take a shot at the end zone. We got a man down there. It's caught. Well, that play right there, it finally ejects some life from us. Good job making up. That's a good catch. That's why you got to do it. That really sparked the game. But hey, we can still win this game. Kick a good kick. Make sure you're on sides. Let's go change the game. And we go for another onside kick, and we don't get this one, so defense heads out there. Just like usual, you know, whenever we don't get it, we're working with a shorter field. Here's a handoff to Aguero, stops in the backfield, makes the guy miss, now he sprints out. Nice little block, makes the guy miss, they get it at the 30. Coming near sideline, 25. It, it was just super frustrating. A little play fake, Papa's gonna roll, dump it off to the tight end, caught at the 10, and he's gonna score. Touchdown, Moorhead State. We're a little down because, you know, Moorhead State's just on their game, but it doesn't matter. We can change the tide. Ren looking to throw, he's got time. We'll throw it over the middle, it's intercepted. <laughs> Gosh! Freak! We make it through the first half. I've never wanted a halftime to come so quick. Get where you can see. It wasn't even about winning anymore. You want to win, but I just wanted to see a spark. I am sick and tired of screwing around with some of you guys. Everything you do matters. This is the first time Coach Kelly has like yelled at the team during halftime. But they're not even better than us, I don't think. I thought they might be. But I knew we could beat them, because I thought we could try harder and be smarter. We're not. We're getting holdings. We're throwing picks. We're celebrating on knocking a pass down when you were beat. You're supposed to knock it down. That was kind of normal for me, I guess, being with him for so long that after, you know, so many games, I kind of got used to him kind of getting on the team. For the other players, they were probably surprised, but I think he had to make some points. We're either going to come back and win this game, or we're gonna get blown out. That's what's gonna happen. I think you're gonna come back and win the game. We gotta play for just the second half. Play smart and hard every play to the bitter end. And let's see what happens. During halftime, we managed to get the defense to have a good little switch in their head and make them start believing a little bit more. Sweep to the left and we read it perfectly, Colby Smith. We managed to come out, get a fumble and a turnover. They pick up Nagy, they dump it off. Oh, we almost had him for safety. Now they may have a first down to the 15 to the 20. Colby Smith hits a ball to the ground, fumble, and we actually have it. We come to the 25. The defense came out and got some stops, and we just needed to get back on track. Everybody receivers, line up and get ready to go so we can snap the freaking ball and get them tired and move it down the field. That's cliche for a coach say we need to get back on track on offense, but we needed to get back on track. We'll roll to his left. Looking, he'll dump it off, and that ball's almost intercepted. And quarterbacking's hard. I try to remember that. It's so difficult. Now he's flushed out to the right. He's going to be sacked. Ren, just step up! Ren, I mean, you know, he has his ups and downs, but it's just the turnovers. I wish didn't happen as often as they did, but you can't put all the blame on him. Ren, come on! Please throw him the ball! Kelly gets on to Ren a lot. Quarterback is pressure. You've got to find a reason to stay in the pocket, throw the freaking ball. Why are it's, that was fourth, son. Why are you leaving the pocket? He was really getting after me as he, as he showed. I mean, I was, I was frustrated with myself. I have, what, what are you doing? I told him, well, I hit the guy in the chest. Then he just lost it. Never been more disappointed in one of my quarterbacks than that. You don't hit the stop and go. We're talking about staying on the spot. You're talking about hitting him in the freaking. That means you think you're doing a good enough job, and you're not. You're missing freaking wide open guys, throwing picks, and you're moving off your spot when it's not there, and then you want to say he dropped the freaking ball. That's you? That's who you are? Because that's not who my freaking quarterbacks are. It hit a nerve for sure. I mean, there's, no, there's nothing a human being can say to you other than stay in the freaking pocket when there's a pocket, throw the ball. I just snapped. I saw red. I came back with a vengeance. I was ready to play after that. Take a shot to the corner over here. He's got it. It's caught. It's a touchdown. Red Hefley to Jalen 
Witcher. I will say the momentum shifted. It was like, yeah, we can play with y'all. Our receivers are better, our own line's better, quarterback's better, everything. To the back corner, we got a man over there, it's caught! It's Jalen Jones! There you go! We try and hit that reset, you know, especially the older guys like me and Nagy. You know, we look around and we're like, it's time to get something going. One play defense, one play! And looking, they got him at the two, at the one. Oh, I don't know. Oh, they're gonna call it a touchdown. He wasn't even close. It was right at the goal line. There is no replay in the Pioneer League. So we're back on offense. This is crucial. Heffley in the shotgun, trying to hit Powell. Underneath, they get it to him, and the ball popped out right into the arms of a Moorhead State player, Isaiah Tigler. I fumble. I fumble not. I'm not a fumbler, but it's just so happened like that situation. Everybody's watching you, okay? Everybody's watching you how you react. Hey, you're fighting hard. Everybody's watching you to see how you react. That demoralized me, because if I don't film that drive, we score. Finish the freaking game strong. Finish the game like we want to finish the year. This is a crucial drive. Coach Kelly calls one of my favorite plays. Jalen, you got to run as fast as you can run if I check to you on a Y quick anything. You know, I'm ready to go back out there. Definitely back to throw. Looking, looking. Takes a shot down the middle of the field. We got Witcher caught in the 35-40. It's a foot race for us. I love 50, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. Jalen Witcher is in the end zone. It was a 92-yard touchdown. Kept us going. It was nice to see the excitement back in their face. Like, yeah, we're still in this game. We can win it. We finally started to get back on track. We made a violent push to get there, and we started doing things right. Things started clicking. Hey, the ball bobbing a little bit. I think we got it. And for the first time in a while, we felt like a team. And I think PC may have it. If we can just get the ball, I think we can do this. Definitely back to throw. He flushed out, he'll dump it off, and that's intercepted. We've kind of like lost that momentum, lost that confidence that we had, and now it's starting to crumble a little bit more. Okay, we're gonna go tough one peel right here. All right, we're gonna be five down on the inside. Don't let him run it in. Be alert for the eight swing, all right, into the boundary. We go out there with another short field and we can't do anything. Yeah, they give it to Aguero. He'll go off right side and he's in the end zone for a Moorhead State touchdown. We're down two touchdowns. This is our last chance. We gotta score here if we wanna win. Keep our conference dreams alive. Heffley in the shotgun. Take a shot again. He spins, he catches it, he stays on his feet. He's gonna score! Two, two. Once we got that touchdown, like we're going for two. I'm like, I got you. I'll get this for you. Al takes it. He'll run to the right. He's going to cut it up, and he's in. I'm like, OK, we still got time to win this game. We got to get this onside kick. Just like you did. Don't think about anything. Just freaking kick it. So this onside kick with a minute left is really, really important. It can shift the whole momentum. All we're just thinking at this point is like, OK, let's just get the onside score again and tie this game up or win the game. Oh, it hit us. It hit us, and our fans are celebrating, but it won't matter. First of all, we were offside. You know, at this point of the game, defense, we got to go out there, and we got to get a stop. He'll go right up the middle. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Cutter, get him the freak out, Kobe. There's still a slight chance that we can win this game. There's still a minute left. We got to stop them short, and everybody else got to tackle the freaking ball. Punch it, rip it, strip it, everything you got, and we'll go down and score, at least have a chance to win this, or tie this thing going to overtime. This is the moment where it's like, can you do this? Can we be in this league? Can we produce? We blitz, they give it to Guerrero up the middle. Oh, he breaks a tackle, gets past the 35, and stumbles to the 28 yard line. Warhead State's going to defeat Presbyterian College 38 to 30. Things kind of felt like they were starting to click again for us, but when you're fighting in a hole, it's just not going to come out well for you. And it was really frustrating to see that happen again for a third week in a row, really. I, I, I'm, I'm not a moral victory guy. We played as bad as you could play on the offensive side of the ball. That's on me. And we still sucked it up. Our defense found a way to get us back in the game. Then our offense finally started clicking. And we've got them to within a touchdown. That's all we could ask for when we're down at one point. You're a good football team when you put it together. You're a great football team in moments, for stretches. I'm proud of your fighting back today. Lawson, call it up for us. Hey, y'all be safe this weekend. Hey, Monday, ready to work. Hey, hose on one, hose on one, two, one. Oh. At this point, after Moorhead State, everybody's a little frustrated. Got to freaking throw it or wait. What we need to happen going into Davidson, we know they're good. We need everybody to actually fully buy into the program. It's go time. And that'll be a really big morale boost if we're able to turn the table.
that first day, that Monday practice, is going to be a lot more intellect. Good. You throw it behind him, or we got a tough completion. We've got Davidson, our rivals, uh, the number one team in the conference, expected to win the conference. We've got a lot to prove. Davidson's going to present a little bit different front than what we have been seeing, and so we had to change some of the protection schemes to, you know, what we do when we're in this situation. Ready, ready. Everybody's sliding down. Yeah, being able to stop the run and make them, make them throw it a lot, that's our biggest problem right now that we need to fix. <laughs> Coach Kelly's been it's a lot more chill lately. Good. There you go, Nando. Way to get out fast. There you go. Nice I guess he's seen that his aggressive side isn't going to work with everybody. Good cut, Kyron. Good cut, Kyron. And beating Davidson, we could still get a big win. Hey, call it up. This is the probable conference champion at this point. Good job, good job. Defense, y'all need to get your bodies ready, take care of yourselves, hydrate, because it's going to be a physical game. We talked about that. Offense, threw some new stuff at you. we got to sharpen that stuff up. So we're going there to win the game. Good, good job by a scout team this week on all of you. I mean, like, everybody that went in gave us a hard look on both sides. That's what it takes to be a good team, to get better. you got to have great looks. You guys are ready for your best game of the year. I really believe your best game of the year. Hose on one, hose on one, two one. Oh. We need you to play big. They're playing man, and you're our fast. Do you know our, you're our fastest player? Yes. We need you to have a good game, you know. Coach Kelly calls people out in front of the team. Um, I don't have a problem with it. That's part of being a coach, you know what I'm saying? Hold people accountable. You got a chance to have a really, I mean, you really do have a chance to have a really big game. I just want you to do it. You can be practicing like a monster yesterday. That's the guy we got. You'll be an all-star. You know what I'm saying? All right. So going into Davidson, you know, three losses in a row now. We got to stop that somewhere. So hopefully we're trying to stop it here. There's a lot of motivation for this game, a lot of determination, and it's, it's time to play. Focusing on coming out calm. Boys, everybody in here, please. This is going to be a physical game. You know it's going to be a physical game. Do not shy away. Welcome the physical part of football. You don't have to be good to be good at football. You don't have to be super skilled. You don't have to be anything. But if you want to be good, you want to be great at football, even just for one game, you have to welcome, you have to want, you have to decide when you get hit or when you lay a hit, it's going to hurl it. You're going to feel it. But you got to not fight it. You got to go out and want no more. You got to go out and want more of that. I can't get enough. You got to embrace it. Today, just for three hours, embrace it for four seconds at a time, five seconds at a time, one impact at a time. That's what it's going to take to beat these guys. And you can beat them. Make no mistake. Tired of losing? Play smart. Tired of losing? Take it out on them! It's PC and Davidson, Presbyterian College, looking for their first conference win. I really am going in thinking that we can stop them some. You know, the game starts, and Davidson being Davidson, you know, they're testing us on the run plays early. Melissimo's going to keep it, and it's tripped up around the 21-yard line. Three, go, me. I'm able to punch the ball out. The ball popped out around the eight yard line and it's PC football. We get it and that's a huge momentum thing. We give it to Ogioki and we got nothing. And tackled immediately. So we've got a lot of things. I feel like we've got some momentum if we can eliminate the errors. Gosh dang it. Davidson strikes first, six nothing with an extra point coming up. They get up 7-0, the pressure's on, we gotta answer. We get the ball back. So I catch it, like I'm tiptoeing down the sideline, we get a cool 12 yards out of it. He'll take a shot down the field, we're gonna catch it in the 11 yard line! Come on, Red! Couple mistakes here and there, but we're, we're hanging in there with the best team in the conference. We'll turn, we'll hand it off to Powell, stretch it out to the left, he leaps for the end zone, and he's in there! I was having a good game, I was out there killing it for the most part, you know? I just I was feeling myself that game. The onsides, we got to zero of them, and against a triple option team, basically giving them a gift. 
Well, they give it to Coy Williams. He goes right up the middle, and he gets all the way inside with the 26-yard line. An offense like Davison is able to get the ball inside the 20 like that. It's tough to stop. They quickly give it to Williams, and he'll power his way in the end zone. His second rushing touchdown of the day. And it's right up there. And good. You know, with that momentum shift, offense has to do something. You know, it can't just be defense making the plays. We have to go down to score. Second down and 10. Quick slant drop at the 30-yard line. We might have to pop. I back up a little bit and punt it. I've never seen Coach Cody punt until I came. So this is definitely a little surprising. And the boos come out. They didn't want to see us punt it. Come on, make a tackle. Ah. Take a shot down the middle of the field, wide open. Not a single PC player was within a mile of him. And this is going to be a touchdown. Freak, it's man to man. How, how freak can you lose your man that quick? It's man to freaking man. Gun snap, here's a handoff, looking for a little room. He'll cross the 35 and just power his way up to the 39 yard line. Cover the ball. Where, where was the ball? What's he doing? The defense is really trying to pick up some traction, but we're not able to stop those big runs happening. And then the offense really isn't going to get it going either. So both sides of the ball are kind of struggling to stop things. He doesn't run it much, but when he does, he's dangerous to the 10 to the 5. It's a touchdown. They scored three as a touchdown, which is obviously not good. Unfreaking believable. Renz made some mistakes. Where are you throwing the freaking ball? Do it your way. See how that works. How the hell does that work? Not good. Self-inflicted mistakes. I mean, I, I want to do better for everybody. Trust that Rain could give me a good ball in that moment. He gives me a great ball. Hefley chucks it up down the field. He's going to be caught in the 40. Spring to the 35, 30, 25, 20. It's Jalen Winter to the 10, to the 5. And that is a P.C. Yeah! Touchdown! Go, baby! We're driving. Dell just starts going crazy. Powell, he's going to go right up the middle. He trips in there, and he's in. We were doing what we needed to do. Davidson responds right back from a PC touchdown with a touchdown of their own. God! Offense, we're going down. We're making some very great you know, decisions. Coach Kelly's calling some great plays. Let's wedge it the freak in there and drive him in and show him he falls. Hey, let's go, let's go. 35-22, Davidson leads Presbyterian College at the half. We've got a touchdown at the end of the half. You know, we're feeling pretty good going into the second half. We're not in bad shape. We've given up a couple easy plays on offense and a couple easy plays on defense. We've got to get a couple stops on defense, just a couple. We're going to come back and we're going to get an onside kick. That's going to be the equalizer. One stop on D and an onside kick, and we're going to equal this thing up. Let's eliminate the give them, make them work, and we'll stop them on D. Good job. Keep your head up. Keep the energy up. We're going to, they're going to make some plays. we got to come back and make one and show them what's up. That's what we've got to do. Get up, get up, get up. You know, halftime comes and goes, and we go back out there, but it's kind of the same story. Their offense is eating away at our defense. Right up the middle, and Sparks is going touchdown. Untouched, nobody was close to him. All right, keep your head up, keep your head up. The team has a long hill upwards from here. I'm trying to make something out of nothing. They'll hand it off right up the middle. Goodness me, again, right up the middle. Without defense making stops, we can never catch up. Bounces off of us and they catch it. Uh, are you kidding me? Oh. Ran back to throw. Looking for a man down the middle. It's intercepted. Obviously, I need to clean up the interceptions. They'll hand it off on the jet sweep. Coming left, cutting inside of the 10. It's here to the 5, and he'll be in the end zone. It's a touchdown. sucked and they played well. 70 to 35 your final. The rivalry game is behind us. 
our conference championship hopes are behind us, and that's really disappointing. Losing sucks. We know it sucks. It's my job as the as the top leader of the team, and we got a lot of leaders. My job as the top leader of the team to find a way to guide us to wins, and I haven't done that. But everybody's got to help. Every leader on this team, every player on this team, and some of y'all are doing enough for what you've done in the past. But this team requires more. But you guys still got to have faith, and you got to have hope that you can do it. Holes on one, holes on one, two, one. Holes. It was a really tough game. And there's definitely a lot of doubt on, you know, whether or not we're going to be able to do well the rest of the season or not. You know, at this point of the season, it's pretty much set in stone that, you know, any playoff chances, any league championship, anything like that are pretty much out the door. You know, with the losses, usually, you know, a team would come together more, but it hasn't worked like that at all. It doesn't feel like a team right now. I feel like just more just guys, a couple guys, like, just playing hard for each other. And not for everybody. You just running it for the sake of running. Nobody's even thinking anymore. Y'all just running freaking route. Part of the guys are coming out there and they're not fully there to practice to try to eliminate mistakes and get better. Seven. That was a complete debacle over there. What the? They're there to get through it and that's showing in practice. You gotta be better than that. We've got four screw off plays in a row and we're fumbling snaps. And nobody cares. Everybody just stops, looked around. This is definitely a point where you can kind of see the people who want to be here and the people who don't. Hey, team morale is definitely, you know, not looking too good. I mean, we're just trying to get ready for the next game at this point. Let's be honest. San Diego is more talented than us, but they don't have to be able to fight harder than us. They're playing at 10 a.m. their time. It's going to be 1 o'clock here. we got a lot of advantages. They're very good football team. They're picked to win the conference, and you guys got a chance to knock them off, and I think you can. We look and we see that they're really good at some things that really hurt us the most. Let's go, let's tackle them. I knew that week, we've got to get back to working on tackling and blocking. It's too much hard work in a game of football to give up free plays on either side of the ball because you didn't know who to block. That's the biggest thing. I need our full kickoff team and our full kickoff return team. After Davidson, the kickoff team really wasn't able to show some good onside kicks. Now, going forward in practice, Coach Kelly has implemented just like an actual kickoff. Acha, just kick it as deep and as high as you can out of the back of the end zone. All right. Our reaction to that was like, thank God, like, about time. You know, he's actually listening to us, listening to the community, listening to what people are saying that we should kick it deep more. You know, give them less of an opportunity to score the ball. It's too much in the middle, Acha. They weren't something that I thought philosophically I needed to change. They were something that emotionally I thought we needed to change. And to me, I hope that shows that it's not about me or my philosophy or whatever. It's about giving people what I think they really need. Acha, if it happens, just Relax, because you got plenty of leg. All you got leg for years. The road to get to this point has been so long and so hard for us. At any point, you can turn anything around. It's all about the legacy you want to leave. And if you can look back and say, you know, I gave it my all and I gave all the effort that I possibly could, that's what it's about. I know this game's going to be tough. We go into the game and just like I wouldn't want it to be, things start going bad. Little play fake, Heflin wants to throw, looking, looking. Now he's gonna be caught from behind, and he threw it backwards, it goes out of the end zone. He threw that backwards, that's a safety. That hurt, and I know like plays like that in football are huge, and you just can't keep having plays like that. Toss sweep to him, trying to go right, got a little room, he cuts it back, he's in the end zone for a touchdown. Break me. We're not doing much at all. They're stopping us. We can't stop them. They quickly snap it. Quarterback sneak. And he gets a push from his running back for a San Diego touchdown. That is not what we want. It's definitely a momentum shift. We'll sling it. This could be a double pass. We are. And then we were speared. And it falls on the ground. And San Diego is still on the ground. And now they're going to say, who fell on it? San Diego fell on it? They did. You know, we make some mistakes on offense. They're able to line up and run the ball at us. We're having communication problems, just like I knew from practice. It's a little cut to the 10 to the 5. And just like that, it's 21 0. It sucks, but it's like, man, we just got to find a way. We just got to find a way to win this game. Coach Kelly calls me on a corner route. And before I catch the ball, I get hit in the head. Coach Kelly actually calls the same play again, just in a wider formation. That time, now he's under pressure. He'll take a shot. We got Witcher down here. He'll catch it. He'll stay on his feet. I catch it, 
and I'm running down the sideline for a touchdown. It was great to feel that feeling of, we're in this, we can do this. Nagy, you know, he just started going off. He was recognizing plays and formations just left and right. I mean, it's just automatic for him. San Diego has the ball on our side of the field and seems like a pretty normal drive. And Nagy, he just takes off and makes a good play, uh, TFL on the backfield. We look down and his elbow, I mean, is just out of socket. He goes down and really, honestly, my heart was broken. He was one you never had to worry about bringing it mentally and physically, never. He was a guy, no matter how hard it got, you could look over there and go, Jared's still on the field, he's still here. There's not a better way about saying it than that just freaking sucked. For some awful reason, I'm falling backwards. Subconsciously, my brain says, put your arm down. And I do what you're never supposed to do and put my arm down. The thing I was scared most about was I couldn't move it. Like I couldn't move anything from here down. That kind of freaked me out for a minute. All I could think about was pain. It was just reverberating in there. It was, it was just, yeah. No, just lots and lots and lots and lots of pain. It was hard seeing him go down like that, especially the way it happened. Like I was on the sideline when I saw his elbow come out of place, and that was just something that I, I wouldn't want to experience. I hate that he had experienced it just because he's one of the tougher guys on the team, and to see him react the way he did, it hurt a lot of people. That really stopped our momentum right there because we just lost one of our best linebacker and the best defensive guy on our team. They got a man down there, it's caught, it's a touchdown. That really hit our confidence a lot. When things are going like they were in that game, and then you put them on the bottom of the culmination of the last few weeks with the losing and trying to fight back and losing and trying to fight through the week and losing and trying to fight for the next game and get everybody on the same page. <sighs> It, there's not a lot of good words to describe it, but you feel, I think, futile. And to get it out wide, and he's going to be dropped back at the 14-yard line. Right along on par with the rest of the season, some things out of our control that really took the wind out of our sails. I'm not kidding. Touchdown, San Diego. When I look back at these games and talk about these times, I see there are so many things that just things went awry and we got close. And we fought back sometimes. And then something else happened. And I know life is, and football is, you gotta fight through those. Maybe that's what learning is, is learning that it's not as far away as you think it is, but if you let those things keep happening, it sure seems like it's further than it is, that's for sure. When things are going awful and you're getting beat and you got the naysayers, you got social media, you got emails, you got real life letters, you got notes people are writing you and leaving on your desk, you're losing, you're not getting the reward of the win. There's a million things that you want to happen better than that that aren't happening. I can tell this is uncharted territory for Coach Kelly. Just being the king, probably the greatest football coach in Arkansas of all time, and then coming out here and just like having complete opposite of that. I would imagine that would take a little bit of a toll on a person. Look like the bad news bears. Heads up, coming at you fellas. It's tough to you know see your defense struggle, see your offense struggle. Nobody can really play good in that atmosphere. It's just downhill. Injuries, a lot of them just freak accidents. You know, we lost Tyrese early in the season, Nagy with the elbow, Tyler obviously with his knee. Some of those things you just can't prevent. We go into practice every day with a strong mindset. Everybody's out there to get better. We're out there to compete. Let's just, yeah, I want to lose a streak right now. And it doesn't help that there is some divisions in the locker room. And on top of that, not everybody's buying in to what Kelly has going on. He's losing fans. He's losing the team, really. We come into Stetson, and I know that we've played the hardest four teams in the conference. I think we've got a real shot against Stetson if we can put some things together. And then here we are again. <laughs> Getting beat pretty badly early, and with a team that needs everything to go right. Their guys start playing with a lot of confidence. Our guys get their head down a little bit, lose that confidence that you need to play this game. You know, one thing turns into another, they start scoring pretty quickly. So we throw some picks on offense. It's just a thing that never ends. It's a never-ending problem. Quite honestly, 
you know, here we are again, and we're in the middle of a, a hole to try to dig ourselves out of, and we're not good at digging ourselves out of holes. We made some big mistakes and didn't get away with it. We don't want to give up games and give it to them and make it easy for other teams to, like, oh, we're playing PC this week. That's an automatic win. Like, nah, that's a shot to all the efforts that we've given the past few years to this program. We're just fighting for basically our, our, our pride and manhood at this point, you know, is what it feels like. Listen. Listen, listen. That, that right there, that, that, that happiness, that feeling they're feeling right now could have been us. So that feeling they're feeling is what we should be feeling right now. We should be enjoying ourselves. We should be looking forward to this Saturday night in Clinton. But now we gotta think to our, in our heads, be like, it's just another one of those games, right? Most of y'all are thinking it's just another one of those games. But to most of us, it isn't. To most of us, that was our fourth to last game. Maybe that doesn't mean much to you, but it means a lot to me. What I'd have to say about the rest of this season is that you're playing for your own honor. Are you just gonna be like, oh, this is just who we are at PC now. We're just a losing mentality. Are you just gonna, are you gonna bring it back? Who you are as a person is gonna be the rest of this season. stepdad had lived out here so we moved out here and this is where I switched in junior high from one school to the other and I guess lived out here my whole teenage years. Hey Leroy. Hey. Family is really really important to me. I like she's already wearing a shirt that says champion. She's a champion already. You have zero idea of the craziness of my life. I mean just absolute zero. I had one of those kind of movie childhoods where things didn't go extremely well, you know, and your parents end up having problems and get a divorce and you don't have any money and we literally at times didn't have food to eat. You know, we went without meals at times. And we lived beside a, an area that had a little bridge. You know, sometimes I just leave the house because it's frustrated. Even at eight years old, I knew things weren't great, you know, at home. There are times when I thought about, I don't know if I want to keep going. I don't know if I want to go on. Looking back, I don't know what it would have done to me, but I wouldn't stood there a lot of times and thought, oh, this sucks. I just don't know if, if I want to keep going. And two things always brought me back. I thought of what something happening to me would do to my mother. Two, I didn't want to miss football the next day. I wanted to go be a part of my guys the next day. You know, that goes into the gift and the curse of the passion of football. You know, it can cause you to feel terrible or it can cause you not to do something terrible. When you go through something hard with somebody and you come out on the other side, that bond is stronger. And that's what football does. Because in the end, nobody's gonna remember this season of how many ever losses we end up with or how many ever wins we end up with. The players are gonna come back in 30 years and go, remember that good time in practice whenever this happened? <laughs> oh my God. Nobody wants to remember the bad. We're gonna have to create some good times. Well, you gotta create those little victories. And the big victory right now for us is that we finished freaking strong. And that I can live with. That was the best practice we've had as a team. And that was a practice that's gonna beat this team Saturday. That, that practice right there is gonna beat this team Saturday. I promise you tonight, if you got on this football field, you helped both sides get better. And that's what it's about, finding a way to help your team. Winning and losing is cool, and it's part of the process. But there's nothing better than the game of football. We travel to Indiana this week for Valpo, and we really need this win. I think it'll be good for us to get away, to get away from the home crowd, get away from uh, people that know us, and go in there and try to band together as a us against the world mentality. So, you know, that's kind of the game plan going in, and I hope it pans out that way. Going into the last three games, it's kind of like highs and lows. There's certain people on the team that are down. There's certain people on the team who just want to give it their all. Good! There you go, Tim. Going. Good, good, Tyler, good. You know, after the Stetson loss, it really did bring us together because Coach Kelly is starting to, you know, he's just enforcing, you know, have fun, enjoy your time with your team.
Good. You just went and played. You didn't hesitate. You just played. You were really good. You're the best player on the field that day. Good decision. We get our game plan together. We know on defense they're going to run the football. Good. Take care of your bodies. Go get you a lift in or go get treatment. Whatever's going to help you out. And then, uh, and then we'll come back Wednesday ready to go. Then we got Wednesday and Thursday to get it in. Hey, family on one, family on one, so what? Family! Actually, he has a lot of potential as well. He's just, he just got put into a bad situation. Like, he's a great kicker. Well, he works on it. He does work on it every day. What's it like being a kicker for Coach Kelly? It's interesting because Coach doesn't kick or punt. Kicker who loves to kick and punt. So you had to adapt to the change, you know, do a lot of onsides. Monday, I only want to make practice. I only want to make practice because I'm going home Saturday because my mom got chemotherapy. Uh, and Monday is like her big remission day. Okay. Where you live? Conyers, Georgia. Okay. Remind me Monday, text me. Yes, sir. Okay. Thanks. Good job on the kicks. Playing college football is already a lot on your mental, focusing on class and football, but I was also focusing on how my mom is doing. We're gonna make a shrimp pasta, actually. Oh, mother, your presence is needed in the kitchen. Having my mom in my head also is the motivation of she helped me get to college and she's fighting through her sickness. So the most I can do is perform my best ability and make her proud of me. I lost my head, lost weight, I lost over 30 pounds, but I never um, lost hope and my faith. He call and check on me every day and every other weekend he come to check on me because I couldn't go anywhere. So. Right here, oh my baby. God. He's so good. He's so behaving, and so proud of you, son. So proud of you. You just make yourself proud. Make yes. her proud of you. Yes. I love you so much. Let's have a good practice today, Chris. We got nice weather. We'll be in and out, getting it done. Have a little fun. Enjoy yourself. Let's make this a good one. Not terrible. We're calling this queso. We eat the chip, chip dip, chip dip. On queso, you gotta not let that guy run out there and catch it. Good. You know, going to the Valparaiso game, we're, we're, we've got so many injuries now, especially in the secondary. Good. Some guys that are out with strep throat, some guys that are out with injuries, and other guys just left. We're bad. Well, other than just freak accidents, you know, we lost Tyrese early in the season, his ACL, Nagy with the elbow, Tyler obviously with his knee. We're on a skeleton crew. Ah, too late. Hey, would you screw around, please? Don't throw just a random dump ball up there where it gets freaking picked. It's over. It's freaking over once you had to do that. Just run the play or eat it or throw it away or something. In Ren's head, I do know his buttons to push are this. He cares. So if you say something you're doing is going to affect the team greatly, he's going to do everything he can to fix that. Can we can we try now? Can we do better, Ren? Yes, that freaking Not a good look. Throw it to the other team, we're gonna get beat by a thousand. One thousand. Uh -oh. Good effort. It's like some bad news bears. Going to Valpo, you know, Coach Jeff pulled me aside and told me, 
that I would be starting at safety. I have never played safety in my whole career of football. Hey, so what am I supposed to be uh, pressed up with the tight end? And what am I? He's close and peace. Okay. Receiver, tight end, and he's on the line. Then I press him. He's faking an A-gap blitz and a slot run. I know, that's what I'm saying. He's faking an inside blitz. They go hut. The guy's seven yards from him, running a five route. He's chasing him seven yards behind the whole way. He's got no chance to get there. No chance at hell. Trying to get ready for Valpo, there's a lot of, you know, arguing from Jeff and Coach Kelly. No, he, he was faking an A-gap blitz. He was supposed to be running that. He ran it that one. He did not. Coach, I watched him. He ran the freaking five. You know, no matter who it is on his staff, he's going to get on to you because he expects perfection. Well, you, get, you can be pissed at me if you want to, but it doesn't freaking matter if we're going to let him run free for touchdowns. We're not going to let freaking play. There's always going to be tensions on a coaching staff because you're together so much. You're working so hard and you're tired. Everybody in. Let's go. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. I'm telling you, vitamin D and zinc together are really good. Make sure you're drinking plenty of fluids, too, and lots of water. All that stuff will help you. You probably think, I don't mind being sick till you get it, and you go, I guess it sucks. Alex Harriet, call it up. Getting a win here would mean a lot, so we're, we really have to fight here if we want to stay in this one. Coming into Valpo, this is really our chance to, you know, just finally get a win. I don't care how the season is gone, I don't care what's going on, we can change it today. It's easy, it's easy to do it the right way. It's so hard and stupid to do it the wrong way, and we've been doing it the wrong way for too long. This can change today, and we're gonna change it. So act like it, and let's get right, fellas, all right? Let's go, man. We're beat up, we're hurt, we're missing guys. We're just gonna see what kind of man you are. Let's see, you know, some of you guys think, you think you're a man. Some of you wanna be a man. If you're a man, you go out there and fight every play. If you're not, you don't. That's it. We have a lot of guys out. A lot of guys got to be ready to jump in if the next guy goes out. That's the way of this game. It's a tough man's ball game. Let's go. Presbyterian College has taken the field, and we're ready to go. I drop back and get some pressure, just see a void open up in the middle of the field. And Hefley's going to step up. He's going to run for it. Across the 45, 40. Got a lot of room to the 30. Getting outside of the 25, 20. Hefley's going to score. He's going to score. And he scores. Rand has this amazing run for a touchdown. Puts us on the board first. Good start to the game. Kyron gets the two-point conversion. And, you know, we're, we're in this. They give it to Washington, going off left side. He is hit at the line of scrimmage. He spins off a tackle. He'll go to the PC sideline, get to the 30. Stood up around the two. He breaks the tackle, gets to the one, and he's in the end zone. We got the lead. Let's play like we got the freaking lead. We still have a chance to prove that the system can work at the D1 level and prove that we can win as a team. Not the guy, Mike. Borakoya from seven yards out for the Beacon touchdown. They had some players that could go, and you know, we had a little drought. They end up coming back and scoring 28 unanswered. Grant throws it to Jay Jones, and he scores and has a touchdown, and he just gives our momentum up, and we're just ready to keep going. The defense is able to, you know, make a really big stop, get the offense the ball back. We expected Valpo to run a lot, and they did. And 
Marvin Hefley looking right, looking right, and he'll be sacked. Rain doesn't always have a lot of time. Rain! God help me, you can't take a sack! Three wide receiver set, Nims will turn, he'll look, he'll throw it left side, swing it up, caught. Washington for the vegan touchdown. You know, we had a couple plays on defense where we had a guy lined up wrong and didn't know till the play was over with. Can we can we try now? Can we do better, Red? Does that, that freaking Ren has to be on what he has to do for us to come out with it. You know, he has to be able to read a defense. He has to know all the reads. He has to be able to throw that ball in a certain situation where it really matters. And that'll be the end of the first half. That ball was picked off by Key and Turner, his first pick of the year. Ren! What the freak was that? So we're down 28-38, but we're still right there in this. We have a really solid first half offensively, scoring a lot, really keeping us in the game. I make two really, really dumb young quarterback decisions right before the half. I ended up getting pressured and taking two sacks, and then we call a deep shot, and it got picked off by the corner going the other way. So Coach Kelly really lights in me the entire walk back to the locker room. Quit doing your own freaking stuff. You cost a seven and almost 14. You're making up freaking stuff. Run my freaking place. You doing your own stuff is killing us, friend. Killing us. I made a couple bad play calls that led to sacks. They scored right before the half. But even with that, we knew that we had found something. We're better than these guys when we play. So keep your mind in the game. Let's do what we were doing on defense at the end of that and what we were doing on offense. We start putting it together and looking good. We look like men out there playing with a bunch of boys. Don't get your head down because they scored that last touchdown. It's the only thing I'm worried about. We can, do y'all know we can win this freaking game? Yes, sir. Even at halftime, you know, you're still not out of the game. Anything can happen in the game of football. So I think we're still riding a high horse right now, even though we're down. Took the coaching, tried to make the adjustments. Came out in the second half again with a rocky start. Wren fakes it over the middle. That's a fumble. And thank goodness there's no replay in the Pioneer League. Just another situation to learn from. Wren back to throw, looking left, he'll be flushed to heavy to the right. Now he's on the run. He'll take a shot down the field for Turner, and it's gonna be intercepted at the 10-yard line. I gotta turn this thing around. You know, this is not what I came here to do. How's that working for you, buddy? Why do you keep doing it? What can I say to get you to run the offense like I want? What can I say? Coming out of halftime, there's a little back and forth. The defense is really just trying to fix our biggest problem right now, which is stopping the run. He gets it on a delayed note. Jackson keeps it, he's gonna score. Who was the defensive end over there that play? Is he, did he have the quarterback? Yes. Who was it? Do we even know? We know that we're a team that when things start going bad, sometimes they go really bad. On the outside, push out. We got back to what we did in the first half that was effective. We threw the ball to Jalen Jones. Come on, bro! They fake a blitz. Wren takes a shot down the field. We got a man is caught. It's Jones in the 15 to 10. And he's going to score. This is Jalen Jones' third touchdown catch of the ball game really bouncing back and forth. They're putting up points. Our offense is able to put up points. Washington's got it. He's got the first down. He's going to score. They scored a touchdown, but we still felt confident we could run and pass the ball and do what we want with him. And after that, Jay Jones decided to just go dumb. Looking, taking a shot on a corner route. It's caught by Jalen Jones at the 42. He spins out of a tackle near sideline. Is he going to score? Is he going to score? I think Jalen Jones just scored. I'm not going to lie. That might be my best play of my career. <laughs> that one felt great. He really did. After that, there's just this period of time, possession after possession, where each team is just scoring. Rebler. Ren, back to throw, a little pump fake over the middle, caught at the 25. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It's Jalen Jones again. Yeah, every time I was on the field, he was scoring, so obviously I'm the good luck charm. <laughs> All right, hey, go get it. He gonna kick it hard. Kick it hard, make a difference. We're ready to stay in this game. You know, Coach Kelly pulls out the old onside. Onside kick, takes a funny hop, we got it! We got it at the 43 yard line, PC! Getting that onside really shows when we strategically use it, it can help us in that game. I'm just ready to go back out there. Our guys are hungry and we want to win. Ren back to throw. 
looking. He'll take a shot at the end zone. We got a man down there. It's caught, and it is a PC touchdown. That time, that's a 19, Jalen Witcher. You know, we've come all the way back. We've got a lot of spirit. Our team's fighting together. I mean, like, really together. Every offensive and defensive player, for the first time all year, are fighting harder than we ever have. We've got a chance to end this losing streak. Hit again. Oh, it's bouncing around. Oh, it went right past us and out of bounds. Oh, my goodness. We've got to fight through this end and get stops and go score. Hey, let's go, D. One more stop. And we just can't get there. Rory Koya stretches out left, and he'll get in the end zone for his fourth rushing touchdown of the ball game. That Valpo game, that was a really fun game. Positives can come from negatives, and just seeing the team come together and really fight and kind of have one goal, you know, that was really exciting. Like we always say, you know, no moral victories, but that was kind of a moral victory. I know it's getting old losing games. I know it is. Today we took a step. We took a step because we fought back when we got down 28 to eight. We haven't done that in a while. It's hard to come back after losing a game where you fought as hard as you did and not have a letdown, but you fought today. I saw some things in guys that I have not seen this year. I'm jacked that we fought like we did. We did not let up at all when we got down 20, 28 to eight. Let's make this last home game a freaking win. I promise you, you can do it. You know the feeling? It hurts more because we knew we could have won. You know, we have two games left. At this point, it's just time to finish the season and you know, play for the guys around you. We really felt like, for the first time in a while, that we were right there on the edge and we were doing everything we were supposed to be doing to win that ball game. Uh, nice job with the hands, Hunter. It was bittersweet, to say the least. I hope that we can take those positive things and move them into the last two games. Really proud of the effort, really proud of the comeback. We got 28 straight scored on us, and in the past, we haven't fought like that. We fought that freaking thing back to three and had a chance. Let's have that again. We'll have a real chance to win this game. Short practice today. Get as much as you can out of it. Going to the next game against Marist, you know, it's our last home game, senior day, so everyone has this extra motivation of playing for the seniors and playing for the team. We're playing our last home game. We want to win it for the seniors. Find another reason to play a little bit harder and do your thing. One of the things that football is known for are injuries. Oh, my knee popped and it hurts right there. Ooh. We do for sure have confirmation. Blake's out with a concussion, and we got Noah out with a concussion. Next man up right there. You know, we're hurting all over. We've got problems on the offensive line. We need guys to sub in and fill in this week because we don't even have enough like old linemen to have two groups. <clears throat> we had a 22, now we're down to eight. Whew. Get in there and help where you can, and let's finish like a team should finish. It's crazy how we came from this healthy team to really just trying to figure out who can play at this point and who wants to play. It's sad that it's senior day and some of our seniors don't get to play in their senior day game. And Nagy's a perfect example. Well, it's horrible telling a kid you can't play the game that you practice really hard, especially a senior. Being a senior, it's rough to not be able to contribute to the team, but all in all, I've played almost four years of ball. I started from freshman year all the way to my senior year. I've played my fair share of football games. My body, the fact that I did not break down sooner is a miracle. Murphy's now had to take over Nagy's role of communication, of the leader of the defense. <laughs> Me personally, I've had a nagging knee injury all season that's just really been bothering me. It's f hurts. For it to get hit again, combined with the fact that, you know, the rest of the team's really injured, I kind of want to be a leader and stay in and, you know, stick it through and be out there every day grinding to try and get this win for senior day. You know, it's tough. hurts so bad. Coming off that Valpo loss, no moral victories, but we definitely showed some bright flashes. Yes, you know, Jay Jones, five touchdowns, that's like unheard of for a wide receiver. That was just so cool to witness. Coming off the Valpo game it was a big validation moment for me. Throughout my time I've been here, the opportunities hasn't come in abundance. So I try to make everything count. After that game, I just felt that I belong. <laughs> Stop playing with me. <laughs> yeah. Jalen Jones, he's a funny guy. <laughs> Jalen Jones is the most like chill, cool dude. <laughs> You don't got a problem with nobody. People are gonna get mad at me for saying this, but like, I see him like really similar to Devontae Smith. Both really skinny, but they can move. In practice, we always chirping practice, you know. That's 2-0. Oh. 
I don't hear y'all this easy, today. We compete. I think that's the best thing in practice. <laughs> Look, that, that's a bad ball. Come on, bro. I had him burnt. What you mean? Jalen Jones had a great game against Valparaiso. Coming into this week against Marist, I think he can have another great one. We need him to do that same repeat performance. Good. But as of right now, he's not repeating that in practice. Oh. Ah, I love how you look too late. You look too late, Jalen. What's your even with linebackers? Five yards. Look, he wants to. I'm getting him to throw it sooner because we don't have any time. All right. When I was dropping a couple of passes, life humbles you at that point. That you realize in those moments, okay, just because you came off a big game doesn't mean you can slack. So you know the grind don't stop, and you just got to keep working. All right, we got to win one. Play, 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 play. It's our last home game. Facts. We really got to win this one. This is going to be a physical game. They're going to try to line up and run you over. They watched Valparaiso last week run the ball 25 straight plays. They've saw them do it. They're going to do it too. That's just testing your manhood, saying we got to stand up. We know what they're doing. we got to find a way to stop it. Good. They smell blood in the water. They think they can win, but we ought to be smelling the same thing. We will win this game if we just eliminate a couple mistakes and play better in the run game. Just a little better, not even a lot. Play a lot better, we're going to dominate. That's where we are with this. James, call it up for us. Everybody can feel the, the end of the season. All right, AC. Practices, you know, are getting, you know, mentally challenging now. You know, some people are losing motivation. They just want the season to be over with. I'm still going out there because there's plenty of people on this team I care about, and I, I can't just leave them out to dry. You did fine until that last play where you got beat up the seam by a running back. No matter if it's raining or cold or hot or whatever, not only comes out, he's in every practice. He's coaching the guy that's playing his spot now. Switch, switch, bud. Friend, we don't want you to stop. Don't stop. Is your brother older or younger? Younger. He's a year younger. He's not going or playing? Not going to college? He was here his freshman year, transferred to Newberry his sophomore year, left Newberry. It was a startup JUCO back in Jacksonville that he played with half the season and just wanted to stop. Oh, man. Yeah, so I, I was just talking to him today. He, he has an idea of what he wants, but he just got in a relationship. A lot of stuff going on with that. Oh, man. That'll ruin you quick. Nice catch. Everybody in, let's go. Good ball, Jake. Some of the professors are telling you you might want to drop a class. Tomorrow's the last day for drop ad. Yeah, if you drop it, you go to 12, you're done. And we had some guys that had to do that. So slowly but surely, it's doing a little bit. The key is don't get behind in your classes. You don't have to worry about this. TJ's a very funny dude. Jones Brothers, ready? <laughs> Coach Kelly emphasizes academic eligibility and staying on top of our books. And uh, this year was one of the years that I actually did stroke in the class. Hey, do you mind if I come by later and talk to you about my test? Yeah, the sure. last test we took? Yeah, okay. yeah. That stuff's really stressful because it's like, if I keep this class, it's gonna drop my GPA. And like, what if I'm failing? And what is that gonna do to my GPA if I flunk out of school? But if I don't, then my football season's over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Most people just say, no, you, you got it, whatever, it's just going to be like high school, but it's really not. You're giving more time into the sport that you're trying to either go far with or it's helping you with scholarship money. We have study hall every night for those guys to come to and help them with their academics. That's This is what it's showing, how there's one in front and one behind. The science program in general here at Presbyterian is not easy. And, um, you know, having that stress, like a bio test that could take me out of football, that's always gonna be in the back of my head. Working not too far. If you would like to get a free meal, the meal is going to be at 5.30 at Dempsey's. Tomorrow's senior day. I haven't been here all four years like most of the seniors have, but I still felt like they welcomed me as one of them. Seniors come ready to roll, look nice, and then everybody else, I want you to play for those guys tomorrow. Guys that have been here, the, been here and seen the, the most transition of anybody on this team has been the guys that are going to walk tomorrow. Being a senior, it's rough to not be able to contribute to the team. They deserve you to play a little bit harder and play for them, 
And if you're one of those guys that are out on the field, make sure those guys know that you're playing the same as they are. You're killing it uh, to play for the guys that couldn't be out there. Because we've got a couple guys that are injured, cannot be out there, but would love to be. It's the night before the Marist game, senior day, last home game. On Fridays, usually we'll go watch a team movie or something like that. I wanted to get us together for a giant dinner. There's a, there's a place in town called Dempsey's. It's buffet pizza. And just having a good time together. How much did you get? You best believe I'm coming back. <laughs> you know, being around the whole team and just talking about the season so far has really helped us. It was definitely an experience that we needed and, you know, we're brothers at the end of the day. How many points do you think you're going to go through? Three or four? <laughs> It's kind of weird in the in the middle of all of this. What you really look forward to in the fall is winning, playing football. But you you find other stuff when you're losing. He said, "Wretch is the right way." Still making friends throughout the season and relationships that that I'll keep up for a long time. So it was nice to see that, and it gave me a lot of confidence going into the next day. Going into the Marist game, you know, there's a lot to play for. It's our last home game. It's senior day. I was happy with my football career. I mean, I would love to have packed on a few more tackles. Why not? That was a day that definitely meant a lot to me. You know, my dad, my mom, my brother all got to walk the home field. It's sad that it's senior day and some of our seniors that were playing at the beginning of the year don't get to play in their senior day game. You no, know, they're still part of the brother. They're still part of the team. And we're just going to play out for them. We're just going to play our butts out for them. Enjoy the last moment, the last time you'll walk out for a home game on, the, on this field. If you get tired, i got to still push and go a little harder, go a little faster. You do that, we'll win today. The Marist Red Foxes and the Presbyterian College Blue Hoes. I, I'm very optimistic that we're going to win this game. Novicchio Powell comes up 30, breaks the tackle 40, 45, 50, stiff arm into Marist territory. You know, we're coming out with a lot of intensity. And it's brought down around the 10-yard line. Got a man wide open in the back of the end zone, is caught! The wave of emotion I had, like, you know, this is my last game on this field, I got to score. Oh! Hey, nice job making yourself open there, starting yourself right, senior day. This is exactly where we needed to be to start this game off on senior day. That is not a good kick. Mercy catches it, breaks the tackle, and Maris scores. No safety help back there. They get the ball back, and unfortunately they score. Another handoff to Powell, down to the 30 for a game to set. Red back to throw. Next series, through a dumb reception. Probably one of my worst games. It's intercepted. Never saw the safety coming up, 25 to the 30. Fade route to the corner. Look back! Where do you think he's going? There's nowhere to go. you got to look back. They drive back down and they score again. So it's a ball game. That's a look at oh, he got dropped. He's hit the backfield and dropped. There you go, Fuda! We're gonna snap it one last time. Here's Devecchio Powell. Sprint straight up the middle. Nice cut at the 10. Dell has a touchdown. And he's gonna score! 12-14-13. We're feeling good at the end of the first quarter. Every time something good happens, it seems like something bad immediately happens in response to that. Red under heavy pressure, no chance to make a play. They go on a three touchdown run. Right up the middle, he's gonna score. All the bad emotions start flooding in. He'll take a shot. Caught and he scored. Self-induced. Freaking stuff. The hope that we had to end this losing streak, to win on senior day. We've still got a second half. I just know it's gonna be really, really tough to rally the troops at halftime. You guys can't turn guys loose. They're in a three-man front and we are letting guys, we're not even, we're just stepping out of the way and letting them go. We can't do, we've gotta do better. And I'm tired of losing, you are tired of losing. We've still got a chance to win this game. 30 more minutes at home this year. So play like it's 30 more minutes at home this year and find a reason. Find a reason to pick yourself up, get yourself right, and go out there and just freaking one time, just one time, every second of every play, everything you've got on the line. Just one time, all 11, every play for a half. Do that, we gotta change. We gotta put our foot down and go play. We're still in this game, we can still win. This defense is awfully young and awfully beat up. They get the ball first, they score in literally two plays. And at that point, this thing was pretty much over. Hunter Cobb is in the end zone right there for a touchdown. 
Powell going to the left. Oh, splits a couple defenders. He's going to score. Dale is just having a phenomenal game. And, you know, at this point, it's just a dogfight just to come back. Looking, trying to set up a screen, and it's intercepted. There's just another pick that is constantly setting us back. He's going to get inside the five. A lot of mistakes. Another Maris touchdown. He just goes down from there. We can't reel it back in the way we need to. I'm sorry, senior day is going so bad. Tough one. Been a tough few quarters. We led at one point 14 to 13. Well, a senior day that we wish had a better, better result, no doubt about it. We're too far behind and too many mistakes have happened. That is my last game at PC. Hey, right, good job, good season so far. Finish out next week. Finish it out next week, guys. At this point, going back into the locker room, just knowing that it'll be a long time before we play on that field again. Hey, real quick, then you can go and eat and all that. In your life, never freaking quit. You didn't do that, and I'm proud of that. Seniors, apologies, we didn't let you out with a win. Evan, Jared, JT, all you Kyra, all you guys that walked, I, I'm so sorry we didn't do that for you. So sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry about your season. The minute they hired me, hired somebody, we weren't going to be able to come together as a group till August. That's not very much time to put stuff in. But but I didn't I didn't find a way to get it done. I hate that for your last season here. You know, it was pretty eye-opening seeing him, like, open himself up and, like, apologizing. If we get on you about something in football, it's not just about football. We know how it's going to help you in life. We've been there. We've made the same mistakes. We care about you. And I'm so sorry about your season. But there are some good things out of it, and I hope when it's over with, you can find something good about today, and you can find something good about this season. Just know that in any faltering as coaching, none of it was ever because we didn't try or we didn't care, okay? And the rest of it, I just want you to get something good out of it because I don't want you to ever feel like, ever feel like that we ever gave up on y'all because I don't feel like y'all gave up either. And that's what I want you to get out of it. Oh! Last real one of the week. Let's go. Hose on one, two, one. Hose. Going to the St. Thomas, our last game of the year. Everyone's fired up, trying to get this last win of the season. You know, we've lost eight straight, so we're trying to end it on a win here. Good. You know, we played St. Thomas. They were a D3 last year, but, you know, they blew everybody out in their conference. So they eventually moved up to D1, which really never happened. We need uh, somebody to step up and have a monster day to have a chance to beat these guys. Really, really do, because they're really good on offense, and they're going to push around our defense a little bit. We've got to be able to score some. The only way we're going to be able to do that is if we're efficient. They're third in the conference, so they're going to be a tough opponent, and they've definitely got a home field advantage being in Minnesota. Watching the film, it's going into St. Thomas. The one thing that did concern me is their defensive and offensive lines were, I thought, as fundamentally sound and as big and strong as anybody, including maybe San Diego. And I, and I thought their guys were as good as it gets at this level. Defensively, they like to have blitz a lot, so we're trying to prepare for that. That's either going to look really good or really terrible. I have no idea which one's going to look. This is the last week, so, so let's, let's give it all we got this last week. Enjoy each other, like I say. Seniors, we do appreciate you. Senior night was the other night. Sorry I didn't end it with a win for you, but we still got another chance this week against a very, very good St. Thomas team, and I uh, hope you guys get to, get to win your last one. So I hope everybody's all in on that. Everything I do this week is the last time I'll ever be doing it, pretty much. Especially after a senior day getting ruined. There's no other option. I'm looking to win this game. I don't want to look back and have any regrets. I'm going to give it all I got, not just on Saturday, but 24-7 every day this week. Watch as much film as I can. Do as much footwork as I can. Do everything to make sure that I'm, I'm giving my all to this team and trying to boost morale at practice, trying to do whatever I can and play sharp to get a win this Saturday. As soon as you graduate, I'm eligible here. I'm gonna just save one class and just take it. Play a smart Tim Tebow. Oh. 
I just started the work study program, mm -hmm. and like I'm trying to see how, how I can like figure out the finances because I have no time to work like that. Yeah. I'm an independent student, so I mean, like, I pay all my bills. Like, it's got frustrating because once I step off the field and I'm going, going, I'm hungry or like I miss a bill, it's like, dang, I need some money. And it was to the point where it's like, do I need to quit football to, you know, have a source of income? I need a co-signer. Co-signer for real? You gotta take extra loan. If you're giving me advice, how would you? I would say as soon as the season's over with, go find a job, work part time, and do and do other odd stuff. You know, here and there, like mowing my yard. Appreciate you coming. Yes, sir. This is good. It helps me and it helps you. So we're, we're yes, glad about that. It just meant a lot to me personally because, you know, everyone was saying how, oh, Coach Kelly's a bad guy. He doesn't really care about, you know, your field. I care about football and, you know, all of these things. And I'm like, the dude just let me cut his grass for money. I feel like the reason why he took a chance on me was because how hard I worked through everything that I went through. When you're ace, they can't stop. So growing up, you know, I never had a dad. My mom, she's very abusive to me. She struggled, you know, drugs and everything. And I was homeless in probably the age of seven going to eight when I was adopted. I just didn't want someone to look at me differently, you know. Me being mentally stable now, it was like, okay, I don't care what you think. I'm gonna tell my story to help other people. Good. He's getting better. Hey, good fucking block, boy. I always thought I wasn't talented enough um, because people were always tell me you're too short, or you're not fast enough, or you're not the strongest. And so now I'm playing D1 ball. It's an amazing feeling. Just be blessed to have the opportunity to play. Be blessed that you know that you have one more game to play. Be blessed you have an opportunity to have fun. It's gonna be cold. We still gotta do it. You might as well enjoy it. Last practice of the year, let's go. Hey, let's get it in, let's get it in. We're looking for quality today, not quantity. Quality, we can shorten it up and we get quality. I'm guessing you ain't ever gonna move anywhere where it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want any part of cold either. All right, everybody in right here, take a knee. Tomorrow, your last football game, okay? So go out there and leave everything out there, okay? Is it gonna be cold? Yeah. Are they gonna be cold? Not as cold, but it don't matter. You'll get over it. The next day, it'll hurt a little bit, and you'll be fine. And you will wish you would have left everything out there tomorrow. I promise you that. Uh, oh! This is the last time. You know, every time I think about it, I'm thinking, we got to go out on a win. Seniors, you're going to go out and be captains again. It's the very last game. Guys, this is the last time this group's going to be together as a team. Every second, no matter how cold, how tired, how awful, whatever it gets, you're freaking fighting. St. Thomas gets the ball, and our defense is trying their best they can, but eventually score a touchdown. And he is in the end zone for a touchdown. We're down 7-0 at this point. The offense has a lot of hype because it's time to put some points on the board. We give it to Powell. He gets past the blitzers. He crosses midfield. We're moving the ball down the field. I feel like I'm having one of my most solid performances, just playing clean football. Right down the field, we're mixing it up well. Dell has a couple nice runs. We swing it out right, it's caught, he's got to get past the man. He spins out of it, he's going to be about a half yard shy. We do a couple good things, and then we take back-to-back -back sacks. He'll come into the arms of a Tommy defender, and he is dropped down. Then we get a fourth and eight, and I get hit. And Ren's got some time. He'll be flushed out to the right looking. We'll take a shot down the middle. It's going to be caught by Turner, who caught it. I've got a play I want to call, so Jake Davis goes in. And I decide, you know what? It's next man up. I'm going to call it anyway. And they want him to throw it. Little pump fake. They'll take a shot down the far sideline. He's got a man scored, and it's a touchdown. How about Jake Davis? His first career touchdown pass. As the game progresses, they're doing exactly what we expected them to do. To Rice, he goes right and he bounces back left. That's a great run, cutting up to the 25-20, 15-10, far sideline to the five, and Colby Smith runs him out. You know, they're still able to hit us on some runs and stuff like that. And, you know, seeing that happen and all that kind of stuff, it's tough. I'm not feeling great, but it's our last game of the season. I think I'm still good to play. So I go back out there, 
Coach Kelly calls a new play that we formulated during practice. Jalen Witcher with the touchdown grab, his 12th touchdown catch of the season. It's just another touchdown to put us on top. First play of the series, I just blow through the A-gap. Under heavy pressure, and we drop him back at the 47-yard line. Trying to get to him is Colby, if Dolan steps up, trying to get away, he's not going to, and the ball popped down, the ball popped down to 40, and I think PC's got it, and we do, at the 39-yard line. The defense makes some really big stops and gives the offense the ball back. We force a fumble here, and now we've got a chance to really, you know, kind of put our stamp on this thing and say, hey, you're in for a fight for this entire game. Then I call a pass play, and we throw an interception. He throws it, and it is intercepted. And that ball picked off, and it'll be Tommy football at the PC 40-yard line. The interception was odd. Wren intentionally threw the ball behind our receiver, which never happens. You threw it five yards behind him. Why did you throw it five yards behind him? Right here. Right here. Right here. He was looking at all in it. Oh my gosh, it's just... See, this is what freaking happens, Wren. You know, we kind of talk about that, trot him back out there. He throws another interception. Wren in the shotgun, back to throw, chunks it out, intercepted, and that's going to be a pick six. This time he threw it to the wrong side. That's not what Wren does. Why would he throw the ball not in the window and try to throw it to him where he wants to instead of just running the play? Before I can even think through the scenario and talk to Wren, we've got to go back out there, and he throws a third interception. The ball was thrown. It's another interception. It's picked off by Hurd again. He's tripped up by Nando at the five-yard line. Three straight passes, three straight interceptions, and all that happened within like a minute. Anybody by Danny? Tell him to check Ren. He's throwing to the wrong side. And that'll take us to the end of the first half. Your score, St. Thomas 35, Presbyterian College 15. This is my fault that got out of hand. Keep playing the same as you came out in that first quarter, and you'll give us a chance, OK? Coming out in the second half, they start off, they go down and score. Looking for room. He'll hesitate, he'll wait for a hole, and he'll sprint right through it, and it's a Tommy touchdown. i got to put Jake in for a few minutes. I've got to. Go tell him to get ready. We go back out, Jake. He gets hit. Here's a play action. Boy, Davis has to scoot around it and fires it low to Nathan Lovett. It's incomplete. Davis took a shot. He lays on the ground and he's hurt. It's obvious he's hurt. There's just shock everywhere. I'm looking at him and I just don't know what's going on. You know, he's not really moving. That's never a good thing in football, you know, if somebody's not moving. They eventually bring the stretcher out. He's okay, he just, he got hit and it was whiplash. They think it's a muscle around the neck, but as soon as you say neck, they can't let you up. He feels everything, he's talking, he's pissed because he's having to lay down. It was just, you know, hard to see your teammate in pain, especially if he was trying to make a difference in the game. You know, we just gotta adjust and I guess next man up. We started the season with seven quarterbacks in August and now we are down to one. Warner Bush. So Warner Bush comes in and he's dropped the snap. And they'll pitch it underneath, breaking a tackle in the end zone. It's a touchdown. From then on, you know, it was really a struggle just trying to get something going. There's a St. Thomas touchdown. I think you're going to see a team that looks very, very different about nine months from now. That's such a good representation of our season. Everything going well, like we're doing our jobs, and then so quickly it will just turn around and become like the worst nightmare ever. I don't know where you are, or where you stand, on what you think about me or the coaches or anything else. But I know this, I had guys that grew on me that I was like, man, I don't know about that guy. I'm trying to find a way to love that guy. And I had so many of you that did that for me. Always remember this, somebody on this team, I promise you, was so glad you were on the team. I don't care who you are. And they counted on you every day. And by you continuing to show up every day, you were there for them. It's been a pleasure, fellas. It's been a pleasure. I know some of y'all might not see it, but you're gonna look back one day and appreciate this, I promise. You're blinking, it's gone, I'm telling you. Let's go, hoes on one, two, one! Oh! Looking back, it definitely had its real lows, but there was definitely highs. There are times where I'm like, why did I do this? But at the same time, I got to develop as a person. I 
I got to mature more. You know, I feel like as an athlete, I've definitely grown a lot. And just being able to play D1 ball, I'll never regret that. I mean, I'm, I'm just pretty pissed off and ready to get working on next season. I'm definitely grateful for what I learned. I don't like everything I went through, but I think it just made me better at the end of the day. We got more football to be played. Still got two more, or three more years of eligibility. Only a freshman. <laughs> You know, it might be the end of a story that, you know, didn't go our way. But at the end of the day, I see it as, you know, time to start a new chapter and to be able to be a new me. Yo, Megan, what you got on? I mean, besides this video on my laptop, I'm rocking the Star Play collection. Sheesh, that's a banger. Where'd you get that? The overtime shop. Duh! Just click right here and get fed like me.